Yeah, I'm in the same. I'm in the same boat as you. I hope. I hope we're. I hope it's good, and people are excited about us being here. But this, uh, if you guys don't know what's going on, um, hang on. I'm looking. So is the Schmodown. Apparently, we're apparently we're not live yet. Apparently, You're live. We are. Oh, we are live. Okay. Oh, okay. Rock and roll. We're doing it live. We're doing, yeah, we're doing it live. live. Uh, well, uh, we are here to talk to you guys right now about the top moments of season seven. We're going to kind of take you through the season a little bit. I'm here with Jen Sturger, uh, the mouth mouthpiece of the league, if you, as, as it were, somebody who understands I every player's story. <laughs> <laughs> you've been in so many key moments, Jen. I mean, you, you for for years now since you first started doing it back in 2017. Because um, I, I was writing out the list of all these matches, thinking like, oh, this is what happens in the game. But I was like, I, I don't remember the post-game interviews anywhere near as well as you're going to remember them. I mean, oh, like... Oh, see, I remember more of the post... I remember the post-game interviews because for me, it's a point to, like, push storylines forward, you know? And that's why right. I feel like I've walked so many people through mental breakdowns or emotional breakdowns or I'm quitting. No, you're not. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I get the first... I get the first chance to talk that person up or down the minute they get out you know, off the stage. So I feel like there's, there's that responsibility that comes with it. Thank God I have a degree in psychology. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, I, I think it's key for you. Obviously you have a lot of personalities to deal with. You got a lot of stuff that you've got to balance and, uh, and, and, you know, you have the sports background as well. So there's, there's the, the world's collide, not to mention you're doing AEW stuff right now with wrestling. So, uh, you know, this is this so is much stuff. Our big pay-per-view is coming up next weekend. Really? Okay. What's, what's yeah. the next, next weekend? What is it? Next one, uh, next weekend, it's called Double or Nothing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Who's do we? Yeah. Who, who's who's in it? I'm, I I hate to say it because I'm because I'm so obsessed with Schmodown, but I I don't know the AEW storylines. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. Um. Well, there's gonna be a ladder match like with like 20 guys, and it. it's gonna be sick. Um. And then let's see. There's Cody versus Archer, which is like. For the TNT, it's for the TV title essentially is what they okay. what they would refer to it um, yeah. for the TNT championship. And then what else? God, there's so much going on. I'm making sure I don't reveal anything that hasn't already been revealed. <laughs> That's why I'm like, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I won't put you on the spot because I got to write part of the countdown show, and so I'm really excited for some of the things that are happening right now. That's oh, that's amazing. Well, people are excited uh, that we're here. We've got we've already got over 100 people watching the show. It looks like the numbers just keep ticking up. So nice. Uh, yeah, I love that. I love to see that. So we're gonna have a great show. Speaking of AEW, we did just have uh, Chris Jericho himself join the movie trivia showdown. He signed with the Rock Stars this last week. So uh, we we now know that uh, and Kevin Smith as well signed with Koi Jandro. Um, you know, Doug Benson signed with the Usual Suspects. It's uh that the league is the league's getting pretty stacked, pretty notable. Oh, absolutely. And congratulations to Roxy if she happens to be watching. Chris Jericho, that is a huge pickup. Huge pickup. But Mom. I think this definitely solidifies. Like, if anybody's, like, been thinking Roxy's a tweener, oh, no. She just went full heel at this point. You have to, <laughs> you have to, to get Chris Jericho on board. Yeah, I mean, uh, oh, my God. I'm looking at the chat here. Magnus382. Ben's hair going full 1980s comedy villain. I yep. like it. <laughs> Look, it's just getting so long. Like at this. A, I feel like such a scrub at this point. I like showed up and Ben's got his full suit on. I mean, for all I know, you might not be wearing pants, but then I show up basically in pajamas and I'm like, let's do this, guys. We definitely got on sweatpants and Ugg boots. So, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're rock and rolling over here. Full Tom um, Brady? You didn't go full Tom Brady? Yeah, full Brady. Full Brady. So, <laughs> so yeah, guys, today the idea is we are going to be going through kind of moment by moment some of the things that have made season seven uh, feel like season seven. It was a the new era, as it was called. Obviously, you know, jumped out, had a crazy, crazy big start. Uh, we had a couple of live, live shows, one in June. Sorry, one in January, one in February, both of which were defining matches for the season so far. But then there was a ton of other stuff. There was the draft. Um, there are all the stuff in the last Ooh. week, which we'll get to tomorrow because you and I are doing two editions of this. We're doing this tonight, and then we'll be back tomorrow night at 6.30 to do the second half. But um, I think we can – if we go back to the beginning, you know, we go back to the draft, uh, the yeah. draft and the awards show. Um, it was, I think the draft put like – it just was the start of the season in a way that – it just let everybody know that things have changed. It really put everyone on notice as far as, oh, wow, there's plenty of shakeups. Aside from like Finstock Exchange, I feel like you guys just kind of 
shored up your numbers, if anything. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, and Christian, Christian announced on SEN yesterday, talked a little bit more about it today, the way he wants to do the draft next year. I don't know if you heard a lot about it, but it's pretty wild. He has a new he has a new idea that he's he's thinking he's going to roll with. So a little different than what we did this year. I think this year a lot of people have pointed the finger and said, you know, it's a little unfair that Finstock got to keep who he got to keep, um, which I understand. Mm-hmm. But look, we have these tournaments upcoming that the numbers uh, are are competitive right now. And if and if a couple factions do well in these Star Wars and Intergeekin tournaments, um, which by the way, the Star Wars tournament is exclusive to this channel right here on Twitch. Nice. It's not going to be on YouTube. You guys are going to have to watch the Star Wars tournament on here on Twitch. So make sure if you haven't already, then I'm old. Remind me again, is it, is it follow or subscribe? What do people do? You got Goddard in here. Okay. So following on <laughs> Twitch is free. It's like subscribing on YouTube until right. we reach affiliate status. So to be an affiliate on Twitch, you need 50 followers. We have almost 2,500. So we got that part. Right. We just need uh, seven different broadcasts in a month. And uh, I think it's like 30 or 40 hours worth of content in a month. So that's why we're doing stuff like this on the Twitch channel to get to affiliate so we can start getting subscribers and bits and stuff like that. But for now, following is absolutely free, guys. Let's get to 4,000 followers and Christian will finally watch the thing. <laughs> Let's get to 4,000 followers. So you can watch the Star Wars tournament. The Intergeekdom tournament is going to be running over on the and- regular page. And if you guys have any questions as we go throughout these watch alongs today, be sure to get them in. We can't do super chats today, but we can do streamlabs.com slash the schmodown the goddard's gonna be popping in here and there to answer your questions what are you gonna say jen and brad and i are gonna be breaking down actually the star wars uh tournament coming next week so i'll have more details on that on my twitter hopefully by monday no probably by the weekend cool Let's just say that very cool so, um yeah. so i think we should jump in with the first one here guys uh this was this was from the draft we're gonna we're gonna talk about this moment this was a this was a key moment at the draft you know we all went in knowing that that uh, Finstock was going to be able to keep a couple champions. With the way it worked this year, there was Dan and Roca. They were founding fathers of the, you know, the championship. And then there was myself, a single champ, and my teammate, Mark Riley, who was ranked in the top five as a team because of – so we, you know, we, Finstock was going to get to keep four guys. And but let's just say someone got a little miffed that he wasn't uh, higher up on the totem pole. <laughs> which has been talked about a lot, and it's kind of outrageous that John got as upset as he did, but he did. Is um, it? Is it? it's, it's not unpredictable because John is a fiery guy and he really cares. He cares a lot. Um, yeah. But but uh, this is where the season starts. I mean, awards are given, but this is definitely the most notable moment because it starts us rolling down the hill. That is this explosion of the exchange that everybody c- continues to expect is going to happen. And we but held look, it Ben, I mean, I understand Roka's rage a little bit because we all know what it felt like, or at least I did, to be picked last in PE. Okay, so... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Miss Brandy Parker here, General in the Action Army, salutes you, Brandy. She says, uh, "You would have been just as mad, Bateman." Yeah, and you know what? You're probably right. <laughs> You're probably right. I don't know. I don't know if I res- if I respond the same way, but I think I would have been pissed. So let's watch this. Um, I was I was sitting there live watching this. this just- John Roca goes in the fourth round. He's got what? Words. What? Uh- oh, he's so mad. <laughs> he's so he's mad. So mad. Let's get something real he moved straight. The sand. He oh man! Up, you two. The outlaw is not a fourth sure. round pick ever, ever, ever. Ever. I was backstage, so oh. I didn't get to you see the full. Get the goddamn head out there. <laughs> Four titles. I have a winning record against every member of my goddamn faction. Be <laughs> out, your Goddamn language, John. It's enough to corrupt someone's soul. I love you, Danny, but I ain't no fourth rounder. Whoa, whoa. Uh, well, he's he, <laughs> he in the fourth. And he's a protected team. He's protected. He's a uh, he's team champions. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how long bronchitis lasts. So just give me. A All right. So we, so we, so we, can, we, can, we can pause now because and, and I think Jen, you talked to him backstage, right? That's a. I don't know where that happens in the video, so I don't know if we warned Goddard we wanted to see that. But Goddard, if you have that as well, we'd love to watch it. But I remember we're sitting there. Um, we're all sitting there enjoying it. And, and for me personally, Kate Muller, is back up here. <laughs> Interesting to see who she's going to pick. Remember, she's a late addition. Uh, we still got a plan? I, I can still hear it. Yeah, I think we still got to play it in the background. I, I love it. Um, I mean, she's Paul Preston, Brandon, Hannah. Um, I think he's just. I think he's just trying to see whether or not the. Did you guys want there. the the post interview as well? I can't remember if it was me or Emma, honestly, that did that one. I just. I, just I remember. couldn't remember if it's like intercut or like all at the very end. So give me a second to. Yeah, yeah, no problem. problem. No well, worries. So I'd say about this moment, Jen, and and you were backstage, so you didn't get to see this. But I, for me personally, that draft show, that award show, 
I was I was victory lap at that moment, right? That was the, that was the yeah. most complacent and happiest as a Shimoda competitor I've probably ever been because I knew I was going to maybe get an award. I was champ. Uh, I had never ever gotten to go to any kind of major Shimoda event as a champion before, and I was just juiced out of my mind. I got of course. I you got, got to walk <laughs> in with the belt on like a big swinging you know whatever and uh yeah i get that i mean i don't get that feeling because i don't feel like i've ever won anything worth merit besides like a geography b i don't think that counts for anything but oh here's emma with uh with john roca we are uh i mean i feel like this is just going back <laughs> look at him i'm so glad this wasn't me roca picked in round four fourth round all right I have a winning record against Ben Bateman. I'm glad he finally figured out how to play a game and win a belt. But I beat Dan Merle how many times I lose count. I beat Mark Riley how many times I lose count. Finstock must have got hit in the head when he's back there. Maybe Kaiser hit him with one of those old bottles from the 90s. But there is no way I should have gone fourth round. Hurts the soul. Apparently, I need to come back in 2020 to really remind people, including my faction, who the hell the outlaw is. And as I set up on that stage, if they don't figure it out, well, I got no problem looking for other management and other teams to be a part of. The outlaw wants to win. Maybe this is a Michael Jordan thing. I need my respect. And if you ain't going to put respect on my name, I'm going to teach you how to put respect on my name. I have to admit, I, I am very surprised that you were picked this late in the game. I mean, you're truly, there's a reason that you're in the Look at that stare, oh, Emma. Oh, my God. <laughs> legends upon which the Schmodown grew oh. to be as big as it is today. So <laughs> he's got like white girl crazy <laughs> eyes right now. Oh, my God. Yeah, thank you. I agree. And I'm glad. You Poor Emma. Disrespectful as RB3. <laughs> Disrespectful. So I just, I'm surprised by it. And apparently my own faction doesn't even, my own faction takes me for granted. And that can't happen. So apparently I got some things to prove this year. If you thought the ally was going to lay back and just sit with that belt and defend it with Dan and be all cuddly and nice. Nah, this is about winning. This is about comp competition. The, the award shows were nice. The award show was nice. This is about winning. This is about what you're going to do in the league in 2020. I'm coming for everybody. I'm coming for Alex Damon. I'm coming for Kevin Smith. <laughs> I'm coming for uh, all the belts. I'm coming for Ben Bateman. Hell, I might even... Night Chris makes a really good point. By myself. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do a lot. So you pay attention this year to the outlaw. He ain't done by a long shot. Well, we really look forward to John. Rose Neither is this promo. No, it's a long one. The Empire. All right, all right. We can we we can pause. So so, so you know, John John's mad here, and, and what I can tell you is there are a couple things. Number one. But why well, didn't why didn't Finstock just go? I choose all of you. Like no mom is when a mom gets asked which child is your favorite, she never answers that question. And essentially, that's what Finstock did in not like that's what Gucci did in not saying, hey, I'm just gonna take all my players back. So however many rounds that is, I'll sit this one out. I'll be at the bar. Come get me when we're ready. You know, hundred percent. I mean, it was it was mismanaged by Roca, and I can tell you, I know by the way that, that Gucci handled free agency, he knows that. Um, he's very aware of the fact that he mishandled it because he called John, he called Dan, he made sure to involve his his stars uh, in in the decisions being made. But at this time, he didn't get it. He was still kind of trying to, you know. And then a lot happened after this too, and we'll get to it later in the video, but. Um, I was sitting there with John and I kind of laughed and looked over at him before he went up on stage because he was so mad. And I, can't remember <laughs> what I, said. I can't remember what I said to him, but I was sitting there. And I was, I was, it was something antagonistic, I'm sure. No, I was pretty, I was, I was like pretty drunk. I, I was like, you having fun, John? Like something like that. And, like, well, you know, to... <laughs> and, he, and he, and he, I remember he, he, I don't think we can curse on here, but I remember he was like, F off. And he got up there and he went and did his promo and then he left. And, uh, and then he was live streaming and talking about how he, mad i had to get on the phone with them i was so drunk i almost lost the belt it was a, it was a but here's the thing i've learned though ben i've learned this in dealing with roca and that is when roca gets hot he is a fire that you just have to let burn itself out you cannot try to extinguish it it just makes him matter yeah Do you know what i mean and that's exactly what you were dealing with at that point yeah i mean uh no no doubt about it roca <laughs> He, he had a lot. He had a lot to be mad about. I think. I think the the reality is, though, think about any of the other ways it could have gone. So if he announces, if he announces uh, that that Dan or that John's the third pick in that situation, Dan's fourth. I think Dan gets probably mad. Dan doesn't not. care. No, I don't feel like Dan Merle has the ego that John does. Let's be real. 
Um, I, I think, like, <laughs> or, 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 you know, obviously, if he announces Dan first, Rofa second, me third, Riley fourth, I mean, I don't feel good about that. At that point, I'm sitting there, I'm holding the belt. I'm actually the champion. I win singles player of the year, and I would, so, you know, like. And I, I think that was part of it, is the optics, but that's why I said, he just should have said, hey, yeah, I'm taking all my, I'm taking all my boys back. I'm getting all these, I'm getting the band back together. I'll be over here, like I said, at the bar. Come get me. Yeah. That's all Agreed. you had to do. Like. Don't ever, and if you have kids, don't ever answer the question, which one is the best, <laughs> which one you love more. It won't end well for you, even if you're joking. So the boulder starts rolling downhill here um, with this start. And we go to the, we go to the next, the next match we're going to watch here, or the next clip we're going to watch here. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong here, Ben, but this is a clip in New York. Um, you jump factions. We're no longer, no, no longer talking about the exchange. We're talking about uh, Andrew Guy. The, the greatest performer, I think, in the history of the Shmodown, as he, as he says, and I think he's one of the best ever, making a change from his heel persona of Dastardly that he had had, by the way, since April of 2017. Um, he had been a consistent character one way since the beginning yeah. of 27, since April of 2017. It took almost four, almost three years to switch, which is what probably do you think longer. Pete guy was. Like uh, peak Steve. heel Andrew guy. Was it beating Merle? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think I think it's because what he did with it when he beat Merle. That's why it's peak guy. We're we're right now over on our on action industries. We're doing the series action rewind. We one at a time. We're going back to rewatch all the old action matches for patrons. And mm -hmm. so we started at the very beginning. And we're right now, I think we're up through Trek. We're about to watch action top ten. But from a from a like heel perspective he's almost at his best right there like when he tackles roca in that next video that's like a really key moment but it actually feels like that next summer when he beats dan and we lose the shire wolves and he has the promo and he's on stage that's like to me that's like the peak that's the most peak guy that i think we ever got yeah i totally I agree he's with been, you on that one i was so bummed that i missed I, I was so bummed I, I missed this in new york though to see it actually come full circle you know up here, I gotta talk to you as well. Take a selfie. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> at, at one point, at one point, you were the heel, but look at the love that you have today. Action on me! Represent! I have to say this matchup it was nail biting at times. Were you This is one of the only this is one of the only matches where Jen you weren't doing the post, right? You, you yeah. couldn't make it, anything you I can think of. And honestly, like I'm bummed because I feel like I should have been there for sure. I forget why I wasn't. I think it was I am AEW so related. It's like yeah. that he did that well. But <laughs> thanks for making me look that much better. There was a little criticism about you saying that when it came to those hard moments that you kind of clammed up a little bit. But it didn't seem like that tonight. You were super confident. You looked under control, except for that one Kurt Russell question. But you were under control pretty much the whole night. What was the philosophy going in? So the dastard has been the greatest entertainer you all have ever seen. And I, and I know that. I know that. But you know what? I've come so close so many times and I haven't quite gotten there. And what did I talk about tonight? I talked about respecting the game. Now you remember some idiot that talked about this at the beginning of last year and his name is Ben Bateman. <laughs> Takes a shot. Do I respect Ben Bateman? I mean, do you expect anything less? Do of course I not. Give Ben Bateman for being a traitor? No. Never. <laughs> but he changed his tune and he won a belt. I'm with the greatest faction in the Schmodown now. And I'm gonna win a belt this year, and right now is the moment that shows you guys it's all about respecting the game. And that's what I did tonight. See, yeah. This is a beautiful way to go into the next matchup with corruption. Give us your thoughts on that coming up. <laughs> corruption. <laughs> Chance and his teammate. <laughs> I've ridden my coattails for two years. God, he knows the right button to sit there and push, doesn't he? Yeah. His teammate is because of me. That is it. So what am I going to do? 
I want to make him cry just like he always cries when he loses. And maybe <laughs> in the face. I don't know. I'm really excited to find out what he's going to do. And he'll probably apologize for it along the way. Well, I guess it's really easy to say that you're happy. He's that you definitely a face. You. <laughs> Busy. And I came out of retirement for her. And I'm going to leave you on this. Say goodbye to the Dastard and say hello to Debonair. Thank you, guys. Wow. So good. Aww, our kid's growing up. Our kid's growing up. Um, yeah, it's so funny because I just remember being like, oh, is this going to be like his, this is going to be like his, his, the rock turn. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what it felt like. I know. I, it's, it's, it's great though. He hits every beat that he needs to hit. It, he really, he really sees the through line. He executes perfectly. I, it's, it's totally believable. He's still got that edge. Um, I think his, I think his stuff. Well, against guy will career. never, guy will never lose that edge. That's just who he is yeah. to some level. There's a level of adorable cockiness and as long as he's on your side you're okay with it yeah i mean he's a great teammate i i think i, I can't remember what show i was on the other day when i said this but like i definitely feel like when i was able to be on a team with andrew and, and team action i had the ability to go hard he would always go hard and it was so much easier for me i didn't have to have as much like it's not natural for me to put that much heat on a fastball right like he does that that's his mo mm -hmm. so um, he just is able to bring it no, no matter what. I mean, that, that's as good of a promo he just cut there as his worst heel work, right? Like, yeah, just as good. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, he hasn't exactly had the easiest of seasons. Like, I feel like that was the high moment of the season for him um, thus far. Yeah, I mean, think that the rug's gotten pulled a little bit, but it was a great way to start the season. And, uh, you know, I mean, he should be playing in live events. That's what he's great at. So I love that moment. Um, we're we're going to continue on here, unless you want to talk a little bit more about the heel to face turn. Oh no! I I actually I think he ex he executed that so well, honestly. And I just I think we had to find a way. Like Christian had to find a way with Andrew to to make it feel like organic and not just like it's hard for some people to play like the nice guy. And I'm like I tried to, I sent him so many videos of old promos that The Rock used to cut, and I was like, this is what you need to be. I, I sent him old interviews with uh, Lillian Garcia and I just said, I would send him all kind like at all hours of the night, I would just send him random throwback interviews and promos to watch. And he was like, all right, I think I get it. I'm like, this is, this is the new era. That was when we were just even trying to talk him into coming back because when he walked away, like that was for real. That's why we all looked at like when he walked away, I, I think I just looked over at Christian, like, could you have given me a heads up? And Christian was like, <laughs> yeah right he didn't know either yeah for no, sure none of us knew none of us knew what uh, it was it and losing a talent like guy would be an absolute gut punch to the league uh because like you said he's such a strong performer one of the best one of the best of, of all time uh en enormously impactful on the league uh was really really great so the next match we're going to look at is actually from the same night and it's the ending of this uh this triple threat match that we watched and a lot of you guys remember this match probably pretty well because this is the infamous challenge match. There's, I think, three or four challenges in this match. Um, and I believe uh, we'll have to watch here and see where this picks up. But I, I'm almost sure, because I'm off to the right here. I'm managing Dan. Koi's off to the right. He's managing Viviani and Brendan. It's this weird thing where they're playing against each other in the same faction for the number one contender. But this is where Brendan grows up a little bit. You can see, I hope we get to watch the moment when he, he starts to really play the game. Um, Hey, it up there. Give it to him right at the end there. Correct. All right. So now we go to Dan Merle. Now we go to Dan Merle, who Dan Merle gets category eight. Okay, so we're so we're this is this is round three. So uh, if you pause really quickly, Goddard, just to fill people in on kind of what's happened here. So what had happened in round two was they each spin. Dan goes perfect eight points on Natalie Portman. I believe it's Bibiani doesn't do particularly well in Oscar. He does pretty well, or maybe it's the mm -hmm. kid. The kid actually ends up with horror is what it is. And there's this moment when the kid gets asked a question and Christian had just announced, we're going to be recycling questions from old seasons. He had just announced it. Uh -huh. um, and the kid gets asked a horror question. Bibiani challenges the answer for the kid, which is inappropriate. We weren't. And, uh, and they give him a new question, even though the challenge was invalid. It was about the conjuring two, I think. Uh -huh. They give Brendan a new question. And it's literally the question that Brendan had missed 
at the end of last year's tournament when he was getting the three-pointer. I mean, it's his tournament question from the end of last season. This is the first match of the new season. Oh, God. And he gets it right. And I say, I throw my hands up, and I'm like, that's ridiculous. That's a, the, he, the actual question, he missed it. He missed it, like, in the context of matches that have aired, like, four matches ago. Like, it always, I have to be, to be fair, Ben, I, it always impresses me when you guys can recall the exact match that a question came up in. I don't know if it's because I am not playing, but, like, when you guys are like, oh, yeah, and then this happened, and that's the question that he asked that. And I'm like, I can't ever remember when questions are asked unless – it's like an epic moment or an epic loss. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'll remember, I'll remember Stacy's Beowulf question because Amazing. it was just such a deep pull for her that we were all stunned. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. That that's one of the best. That, that that her final. If you guys haven't watched it right now, uh, it's up since we'll last. We'll talk about week. it a little bit tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, and it's up right now. You guys should go watch before tomorrow. It's Stacy's match against Eric Zipper, um, and it's just the ending is just phenomenal. It's so good. But so 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 Brendan gets this question. I jump up there and start waving my hands. That's inappropriate. That's wrong. Come on, he just got that question. Christian is angry at this point. He's like, get off the, like, get off the stage. This is our first show with Skybound. There's been a million challenges. I don't want to hear it. I already told you the questions were okay. And Brendan, to his credit, is like, hey, he said questions you can't recycle. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. And Brendan's so nice. He's like, he told me at the bar afterwards, he's like, look, man, I've seen you argue for questions and, and fight for challenges you know are wrong just to try to get yourself a points. I'm does doing he get, it. Does he get fiery? I'd love to see the rest of this clip. He doesn't get fiery. He just gets like, he like he's like he's like I'm going for it. I'm going I'm sorry I'm sorry but he like because oh. <laughs> he's like well, he's such a nice kid yeah uh, because before the match uh, they were surprised that Dan put Middle Earth on the wheel and so both Bibbs and Brendan were upset about that and so Brendan was like well Ben you guys got you guys got Middle Earth don't even try it you guys got Middle uh, Earth that, so, yeah. that match the behind the scenes on that match was outrageous because yeah there's a whole green room conversation that's happening. I mean, this is some behind the scenes stuff, but we'll share it. For, I think you guys have maybe heard this. We're all in the green room. There's Guy sitting there. There's Merle, and I'm studying with him because we're getting him ready. Mara's in the room. Viviani's coming up the stairs. Viviani hears that Miller's going to be on the wheel. At that time, we were under the impression six weeks, eight weeks prior to the match, you could do that. So Dan studied it. He's ready. He's ready for Middle Earth. Viviani starts throwing accusations. Well, the rough draft of the rule book, Ben, you were involved in, so you knew this. I didn't. You should take it off the wheel. Dan's getting heated because he's like, now you're questioning my integrity. The whole thing is, and I say to Dan, hey, we got to step outside for a second and talk this through. So Dan and I go to the next room, and I'm, I'm sort of looking at Dan, and I'm just like, look, dude, either way, if you keep it on the wheel, you're going to be upset. If you take it off the wheel, you're going to be upset. You got to just go with what you prepared for. That's not your fault. It's not your fault of it. Yeah, you can't change your game plan just because someone else didn't know. Like, that's not. Right, totally. But, but to be fair, I, I mean, I just playing devil's advocate, I feel like I've been pretty in the loop when it comes to rule changes and things like that. And even every once in a while, they're like, oh, no, no, we changed that. And I'm like, when? I'm around for pretty much everything. So unless there's like secret meetings happening, like, when did it happen? It wasn't even, no. it was like a, in the first parts of the season, there was a few things like that. Like, for instance, I mentioned this rule book. I, I submitted a framework draft of a rule book to Christian that he and Mark and a bunch of other people made edits to and then sent to legal. Like, th that's not even in play. Nothing that was ever even written there has any, there's no, you can't cite that. That's not official. It's never been introduced yeah. to the league. There's no, none of that stuff has. It's still based on basically what we all understand about the league. And so um, basically the, the kid fights for his point. And then at the end, you know, he says like he was willing to get fiery and loud because he's seen other players do it. He said to me verbatim, I've but seen so many play. people accused a Bibbs and the kid of being like of becoming heels during this match. <laughs> I do remember that happening. And I'm I'm sorry, but arguing for your point does not make you a heel. Well, wait till you okay. see what happens in this in this last bit, because you're gonna see the thing that people pointed pointed at Viviani hard. This is a big season moment. He took a lot of heat for this. Who plays the park owner, John Hammond? Wow. Richard Attenborough. Yes, sir. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Hang on one second. What? Oh, so good. Yeah. Uh, I want to challenge this, actually, because he is not Sir Richard Attenborough. Oh. He is Lord oh, Richard come Attenborough. come on. Okay. No, 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 no. If you put it in there, it should be accurate, okay. and that's not accurate. The challenge is in. You like challenge is in. It changes their name. 
So this is challenge number three of the match. And now Christian's officially just like, <laughs> I can't, this is live. I can't keep Oh, he gets the so game. heated. So. <laughs> like, we're going to let it slide. We're going to let it slide. Never mind. Wait, no, you ready? You ready? Challenge? Do you use I'm not. The challenge? I'm, I'm rejecting the challenge. You can't it's fine. Can't <laughs> the challenge is in. Okay. The challenge is Was in. Was he Sir Richard? Uh, you put the challenge the in. The challenge is in, and it has been overruled. The answer is Richard Attenborough. We accept Sir Richard Attenborough as an answer, and we move on with our lives. I'm Sir Lord Richard Attenborough. So is nine, fine with so that. So 1918, 17. 1918, 17. I think there's another good moment happens here in a second. This match is so good. This match is so much fun. I, you know what? I had almost forgotten what Christian looks like with hair. Pointer here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Famous actors and actresses, William. Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. Another this one right here. Teen eighties action superstar was originally considered for the role of Axel Foley in Beverly Hills Cop. Absurd question. Wow. Not at all a fair question. Viviani, back in the lead. Originally considered. It's like a because it's just a casting rumor. Like nineteen. So I think I jump no. up on here and I, I think I jump up here and I fully challenge it. I'm pretty sure. We go now, on to Brendan. Who's got his three pointer? All right, Brendan, you selected number nine, which is an odd number. <laughs> And Three it corresponds the question? Is it to the world of romantic comedies. Oh, really? What? Yeah, here we go. What's the right, which one? Because it's originally considered as conjecture, it's casting news. It's the reason that's Christian at this point is like, just get off the stage. I actually, but I agree with this challenge. That's not a good, yeah. I wrote a lot of questions. This is I the fairest challenge. Win. This is the fairest challenge of the whole match. And it gets yes. really overruled by Christian because he's just like, get off the stage, man. Get off the stage. You can't rush the stage. He's He said afterwards, like, <laughs> but the funny part was I asked PJ Campbell about it afterwards and Frank, and he said, uh, he said, you know, actually, there have been questions like that in the past. It's not something we want to do going forward based on precedent. That's actually an okay question. It shouldn't be. I don't be, agree with that. But it is. I don't agree, I don't agree with that at all. Um, but yeah, it was, I, it was. I I would have backed you up on that one. If I was at that event, I'd have been like, hold my mic. And I would have walked out on this. Like, I get a little fiery when it comes to that stuff. We've been into like actual tapings and something like that's gone on. And there's been a lot of back and forth in the room. And I've literally gone out and been like, the answer is this. And Christian just looks at me and I'm like, he's like, okay, fine. Let's move along. You know, but it, yeah. it, sometimes it just takes being the voice of reason. And like, I watch everything from the booth. So like my perspective can't be like, it's not like I'm choosing a side over the other. You know what I mean? hundred percent. Yeah. I think I, I'm pretty sure, you know, he overrules the challenge there match ends and, and Dan, you know, defends, which is a great ending and he's excited. Um, but, uh, it, it's definitely, it, it was a very dramatic match. That that's, that's, uh, Goddard, I can pop you up here for a second. I know you were there. You were there for that one. You remember how fiery this this felt at this moment? Yeah, like especially starting with the conjuring question because, uh, like that was the moment. Because yes, they're both on Shazam. They're both. Uh, I mean, they're both on the Quirky Marks, and they're both Shazam. They're both literally teammates, let alone the same faction. And that yeah. was the the moment that it really did feel like it was two v one. That Bibbs challenged for Brendan yeah. to like literally. So Dan wouldn't get the steal. It wasn't so Brendan could get an extra question. It was so Dan wouldn't get the steal. And, and then also, it almost becomes like a handicap match because they're just yeah. essentially just trying to keep Merle off the board. Right. And and especially when and like the Bib Sir Lord uh challenge, I'm actually okay with. It's fine. It, it's it's fine. You want if you want to play like that, like you can do it just to rattle your opponent, which Dan seemed a little rattled. He he won because it's Dan. Mm -hmm. But maybe a lesser a lesser player would have lost that match. But the the challenge about the the horror movie it was like all the context clues are in there. Like we just watched my match uh, with the Pride, and it was like what 2005 sci-fi movie stars? Uh, what who's the star of Blank and Blank Serenity from 2005? And I misheard sci-fi. I heard Captain, and I heard Serenity. I wrote Matthew McConaughey, that terrible movie from last yep. year. But the answer with Nathan Fillion, I can't challenge that because they said 2005 in the name of the character. That was the same kind of context from the Conjuring 2 question. You can challenge if it's a demon or a, a Baba Yaga or whatever the, the conjecture challenge was. But the, all the context is there in the question. Yeah, for sure. And it was it was it was a heated moment. Um, and I, I remember, you know, we talked about it a lot at the bar afterwards and um 
Yeah, it was, and then Dan, Dan, of course, wins. Um, Goddard, do we have any Streamlabs search chats we want to read now, or do we want to uh, wait maybe a little bit? Uh, we can wait. I got one from Jeremiah Morris. Uh, it's about the Inner Geekdom tournament. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we can, we'll, we'll save him. Jerry, Jerry can uh, he, he can hang for a second. And Jerry, put, if you got to get out of here and you want to hear it read, just just uh, yeah. Let me let me know in the chat, uh, Jeremiah, and I'll, I'll read it. Uh, let me know, brother. So I think next up uh, is the next match. What, what do we have queued up next here, Goddard? I should pull the, the list in order. I'm um, just so I have it in front of me. Um, I think I actually have it right here. I can take a look. Uh, uh, Tom and Paul uh, versus uh, Deep Thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is so this is a good one. Um, it's a very fun one. Yeah, because th there was a lot of hype going into this match. I think probably getting there's there's a there's a moment in the second round, if I recall, where Kate Mulligan picks. Uh, she she they're they're all trying to decide the slice to pick. So actually, yeah. that that'd be the best place for us to probably look at it, and then we can we can watch the third round as well. But um, that second round slice situation is a big one. I think going into this match, you know, so deep thirteen, you've got Whitney Seibold, Alonzo Durante, players that have been in the league for a few years each, both people mm -hmm. that know a lot about movies. They're, you know, critics. They're and also more importantly, they know strategy. Well, no, I think Alonzo and Whitney don't. I think that's the point, right? Is that Whitney? I, think, I mean, I never thought Seibold was a strategy guy. You think he's a strategy guy? I think that they know more than they let on. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Cause I always felt like that was the big knock on Duralde and Whitney is that they weren't, they weren't as like technically proficient of a team. They just know a lot. So you've seen Whitney I feel like Whitney's always kind of been stuck with people that they didn't balance him, if that makes sense. Yeah. You like know what I mean? mean? Like, it's so important when you have a teammate that you – I know someone's going to shout phrasing in the comments, but that you fill each other's gaps of knowledge, you know? And I feel like Whitney's never really had someone that's adequately done that for him. And so this felt like an interesting matchup to me. Yeah, but make no mistake about it. Whitney and Whitney and Alonzo were drafted. Those those guys are both like fourth and fifth round picks. Uh, Tom and Paul, they're they're both at the end of the first round, beginning of the second round. I mean, Goddard obviously that's his faction. He can attest. Like Tom was talked about as a as an instant champion, and Paul Preston going at the in, at the end of last year had a really good run. You know, I think this was a team people were very excited about. They they were already anointing them as like one of the hot new teams. So the way this goes is pretty surprising. As soon as Goddard has it, we can. We can queue up round two here, but you know Mulligan is a is a newer manager and she hasn't played. And live. it shows here. Yeah, so so we can queue it up now. Paul is Joyce. So oh, now Tom and Paul, this is their first real test. So, so Tom and Paul are sitting here. And I love I love he's got the protein blender on the table, <laughs> the bullet. Uh, are gonna confer with Tom and Paul and yeah. see what they want to stick. So clearly what you can tell here based on what happens, Jen, is that they hadn't all discussed looking at the wheel prior to the match, what they were going to do in the situation, which is a classic rookie mistake. You can never, you don't want to be sitting here trying to make this decision with 15, 20 seconds. That's just not what you want to do as a manager. But also you should know what your opponent's strengths and weaknesses are too. Like that's a big part of strategy, at least for when I, when people ask me for advice, I'm always like, well, what are they good at? You know, and I feel like that was oh, a big oversight on Kate's part to not have that information. Goddard, can we back up for a second so I can look at the wheel? I just want to see what else is on there. Um, it's, it's kind of an interesting. This yeah, be yeah. Because I was talking about this like when it first happened. Because if you look at the wheel, there's nothing on that wheel that would honestly stump Whitney or uh, Whitney or. So I'll, I'll read it for you. We got Pixar, biopics, Tom Cruise. Uh, Festival Darlings, romance, rom-coms, rom spinners, 90s, directors, Charlie Theron, thrillers, Star Trek. And what and, was already and and had – okay, never mind. That was and then I'm, I'm pretty sure Star Trek and Festival Darlings are their strengths. So, yes. Oh, yeah, he, for sure because uh, I believe he actually does something with the festival circuit. So, like, that would be yeah. what – And then uh, Whitney and Biv do a, do a podcast going episode by episode for Star Trek as well. Yeah. So if I like was if I was in Kate's shoes, I would and I had to give them something, I would probably go Pixar. Because yeah. the Pixar cuts have gotten so deep at yeah. this point that that is what I would have done. Yeah, I mean, I think I said this and we're not going to watch this part of the match, but a little later in either this video or the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about the who's the boss uh, versus odd couple match. I think it might be tomorrow actually. Yes, and, tomorrow. And uh, we take Pixar in that match because we get Spinner's choice. And we don't get a single Pixar question out of six in that match. 
that's like the kind you'd expect where you'd want to be able to just get get lucky and ace one like yeah, yeah like think, who was the voice of this and you know it's a major star yeah or, or who directed the incredibles like the only like you know the base level obvious question we got was like who composed the score for up right like i remember that you, you've got to like know michael giacchino which is like which is an easy one if you know it but if you don't know composers you're like i have no idea every other one was like name of character name of ship location what did she get for a present you know that's what they would have gotten stuck with and someone said, well, Whitney has kids though. I think he knows Pixar. No, there's a difference. And that is something that I got so like, I I kind of like sneered when I saw the way Snyder was going after inner geekdom. You can casually watch these movies. Like you can have them on in the background if you have kids and you can be like, oh yeah, I know these characters. But the stuff that you're talking about are very specific things and very deep holes. And there's no way that someone that's casually walking in and out of the room being like, are my kids burning anything down? They're not going to have that knowledge. 100%. I mean, I, I can test, you know, I saw, I've, I've gone to the daytime screenings. You know, I remember Lego Movie 2. I remember I saw Whitney at that screening. A lot of the, a lot of the Disney ones, I'll see them at El Capitan. So I, I don't think it's totally wrong, but I definitely think Pixar is pretty specific. So they, they give Festival Darlings they do great with it, which then leads into this last round. I and mean, God, if we can queue up a little bit of the last round, then I think the post match you said on this one's pretty good, right, Jen? What's that? Did you say the post match? Good? On the yeah. Yeah. You must answer the three pointer. So, uh, deep 13, you're sitting in the lower ranked chairs, but you are. So, Tom and Paul losing here by two points going into this round, I think is surprising for most people. I think, I think most people are pretty like. Four. I love he's actually shaking up his protein. He's actually, that, that's, he's, that's a real thing. He's drinking it. Ugh. Yeah. Didn't they both get opponent's oh, choice? Didn't they both ball. spin opponent's choice though as well? Oh, did they? I think yeah, so. Yeah, I think so. Six. Oh, oh, uh, oh. You already selected six. You're going to need enough to answer that question. And you look, you look, you're watching Paul and Tom here interact, and like I don't think those guys knew each other before this. I don't know if they knew each other. They probably talked a little bit at the match. I mean, I don't know the backstory on this, but Tom's a pretty disconnected, pretty dis disconnected guy from the Shmoda. You know, he comes and he plays, but he's not really in the scene. Right. So, um, yeah, well, both got opponent's choices, Jerry. Um, points to tie the match. Who provided the score for the films Apollo 13, A Beautiful Mind, and Braveheart? I would know this question, but I, I can't remember if they get this right or not. Oh, maybe Tom doesn't get this right. So that's, so that's a tough one, right? Can you repeat the question? I can. So, so Tom's trying to stay in character here, but he's also trying to do his best to rack his brain. He yeah. knows it's a two-point question, but maybe he's not as familiar with the Schmodown to know exactly what he should be looking for with this, right? I think I think in a two-point question scores and soundtrack situation, you really want to be thinking, okay, it's it's got to be a major composer. Has exactly. For it to be a two-pointer, absolutely. It's not going to be somebody obscure. So then you go through your James Horner. James Horner. And who did he guess? Is who we're looking for. So we are going to stick with Tom. He didn't Paul. say anything. For their three points. He didn't he say, no. yeah, yeah. Okay. He just didn't. So which you should never do. No. I would I always guess. He's rattled there. That, that's tough, though. It's a hard category to get as your two. Fantasy. Yeah, I, I think this game, too, was the first game Tom didn't get a perfect round one as well. Yeah. John Malkovich plays the evil king Galbatorix, who has his own black dragon in what 2006 film? So you know this? <laughs> Do I know this? <laughs> this is like Aragon or Star or Stardust or something like that. Three, two, Aragon. Woo! That's correct for three points. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> have taken That's the lead for three points. He had to reach down deep, Ken. No more Jason. Good pull. That's a good pull. Oh, pull up something and he pulled up Aragon that is the correct answer all right and now D13 no chance of a technical knockout they got to get some questions right all right one point lead indeed all right you guys chose number one that this was the first barn burner team match of the year uh, this was the first like and I this, I this might have been the first team match of the year but this this I believe they set the points record here deep 13 has to get 10 points oh is that we're gonna set with no with no manager here to help we're gonna have to take that Alonzo Duralde is here you can put it on the board. Here comes sports. Two-point question, Alonzo. Which is not his strength. Friends actor starred in the 1996 comedy Ed, playing a baseball pitcher who has a chimpanzee as a roommate and a teammate. 
That would be terrible. A you got it. Two <laughs> yeah, because he's lucky that he got. He's lucky that it's a two pointer, not a three pointer. But that's a. I mean, I, a a I, rem I, mean, I remember that. Like that I didn't. A, I you you know it's a Friends actor. You know it's likely a male because it's a baseball yeah. movie. Yeah. I mean, it really narrows it down for you. Yeah, there's three people you can guess. Yeah, I remember that movie over Deep Thirteen. Gentlemen, you can confer for your five-point question. You selected number 16, and that corresponds to the world of directors. And your question is? This is right in Paul's wheelhouse, for sure. John Carpenter directed Chevy Chase in what 1992 film? Yeah, I don't know if I remember this one. Um, they definitely know it, though. Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Tom and Paul have taken the lead. 1992 John Carpenter. That's like perfect wheelhouse for those guys their age. That's exactly that's exactly like an obscure movie they would know, you know? The scoreboard looked good. Although it is a moot point, we are going to ask a three-point question to Deep 13 just to keep you loose and keep putting it on. So, Ken, right. what is their three-point question? I mean, if I'm if I'm uh, uh, chosen uh, Tom and Paul here, I feel pretty good. All, mm -hmm. They just have to miss their five pointer and they win. Three yeah. point question: What Mike Nichols film stars Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton as a destructive married couple? Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? That's three points. Three oh. points right there. It, it, it's a great answer, Ken. It, it's nice knowledge that Whitney has. Uh, Good call. Solid call. This contest, except if you're talking about all-time point scores mm -hmm. in a team match, if they now get their five-point question correct, they not only win the match, they also will set a new record. 36 right. points. They will tie, an, right. they will tie an old record. Tie an old record. It's a lot of points. <laughs> a lot of that. That's a lot of points. 32, 31. <laughs> Oh my God! Stop answering. You guys, <laughs> you both be answering uh, this question in the category of famous actors and actresses. Famous actors and actresses. A five-point question. Which actor stars in multiple roles in the psychological thriller *Raising Cain*? Hard five-pointer, in my opinion. John Lithgow. Hey, go winner! Amazing. So let's, let's watch the. You said you said uh, is it Tom and Paul's the is the good? Plus, it's Tom plus and Paul's one? honestly, but I I think with Whitney I just kind of said the same thing that I've already said here, and that is that. Hi guys, it's so great to be back here with you. It's so yeah, great okay. You two having so much fun playing the game. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I've we can skip the Tom and Paul. I've seen you guys compete so many times, and you just seem rejuvenated. Is it a partnership? Like, what is it? Well, I mean, th this this handsome mound of sex right next to me is certainly helping. Uh, and it's, it's fun to <laughs> at least my facial expressions <laughs> literally match what I did there. It's genuine reactions. But it's more fun when you win. <laughs> that's the that's my favorite thing about that. It, yeah, it's more fun when you win. I mean, yeah, obviously, and obviously, neither of these two guys, okay. neither of Whitney or Alonzo, care very much about the schmoda. I mean, not compared to like no, legends. They, they don't is, talk about it all the time and show up all the time. But they love winning. They're they're so much more stoked on it. You know what I mean? This is the kind of thing that sucks guys like these in. If if guys like these had that passion, that fire, they know enough to be competitive. That's why that's why players like these guys are always scary. The draft in the fourth and fifth round of a draft because they this is currently the A team right now on the Drugs, and they're good enough to beat the best team. They know enough. You guys did end up tying the team record. What does this kind of early success for you guys as a, as a pairing mean to you all? Especially considering that you did it all without your manager robert meyer burdett do we even know where he is uh last i heard he was got her we can we can skip to the tom and paul yeah, exactly Something like that. Um, but i think i did like i said i highlighted the fact that it's just, I, I think in the league it's it's wheel spins it's technicalities it's challenges it's things like that you know you come I'll up with trivia, i'll give you a game <laughs> things like sure it was a bad wheel spin we gave him the wrong category and that probably sucked us you know so that's what i gotta leave that's the sandwich i gotta eat you know, first of all, I'm really upset. First of all, I'm not on the free for all poster. Me, right? I'm coming up. I'm already in a dark state. If this thing comes up, <laughs> I'm gonna have to head back out to the desert. Des desert. Okay. Uh, Grace, do you have any thoughts on today's match? Yeah, I mean, look, this is our first team match of the season, and the beauty of the game. This is, is the thing. Like, Grace should have known better. Like, Grace is usually pretty conniving when it comes to that type of stuff. It's just that deep 13 played absolutely out of their minds. 
That's this what this loss and the way that it affected Kate destroyed Kate. I think she felt so guilty. Oh, yeah. she, she didn't know she didn't know what to do with this with the slice. I think she Well, was, I think I think before that it was first of all festival strength or festival darlings was in our strength okay <laughs> so we give it to them we can't spin it okay because if we had spun that time we just with the hands if we had spun it okay we i think up until now kate had just kind of seen her role as more of an improv performer and like not as much in the strategic okay. side of things. And she's still learning all of that too, as we go along. So it really hurt them though. You aren't kidding Ben. Yeah. I think also, I mean, having talked to Kate on backstage this last week, I mean, she takes the stuff, you know, she takes the stuff very personally. I think she, I think she felt like she let her guys down. So, you know, it's going to be exciting to see what she does in the tournament here. She's putting in Saul. There's a lot of heat right now between, you know, Brandon, Hannah and Saul. I think it's probably a good time to jump in and read Jerry's comment. You can pull Goddard Let's back on the screen here. Yeah. And then say, make like, that yeah. kid work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll defend Kate in that the players should also know, like Tom and Paul should also know, yeah. like, 100%. hey, if, if Kate said, hey, should we give him Festival Darlings? Tom and Paul should also be like, no, I don't, I don't think we should. Like, there's Pixar, there's rom coms. Again, I still think Deep 13 would have scored 10 out of 12 points on any of those slices. Yeah. But yes, Festival Darlings was definitely the wrong, wrong choice. Jeremiah Morris. So Ben, are you going to say Swag and the Droogs are getting an unfair shake in this inner geekdom tournament because their points are limited, just like your exchanges points are limited? Uh, I mean, we're, I don't think we can break down every single piece of the brackets, but uh, their points are limited because why are their points limited? What am I missing here? I think now that uh, Swag and the Droogs both have like players on the same side of the brackets, like like Emily and, and Craig were, but now Emily and Craig are on opposite side of the brackets. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I, I think, I don't think you can, you can uh, balance it perfectly, but I definitely think that when we had two people that were going to have to play each other in the second round, that was a little absurd. I mean, that's not capping. That's not uh, giving you a disadvantage. That's just straight up saying you will not have two players go past round two period. There's yeah. no, there's a physical impossibility of that happening. Um, you know, I think, I think being, Met, you know, meeting your opponent on the other side is something that's going to have to happen. There's nine teams. That's just that's just what it is. Meeting your own teammate. Yeah. 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 Sadly, sure. it's it's just how the you know the dice is rolled at times. Um, someone did mention though about how it, this is probably on Tom because he's played Whitney before. Yeah, but like that doesn't that doesn't mean that Tom would know all of those things. Um, and like I said, a lot of that comes down to managers having done their homework. Right. I talked to a lot of these managers. I mean, I'm not on backstage every single day, um, but I, I keep up with what's going on, obviously, in the drama. But I talk to a lot of these managers, and they do their homework. And like I said, I just don't know that Kate knew what she was getting into from the strategy side of things. And I think that was a big wake-up call for her, and you're going to see a different Kate the rest of the season. I mean, you have, definitely. Like, she she took that as hard as anyone could take it, and she is... She has not made that same mistake again. Uh, concerned fan who is not Lucas. <laughs> Great show, but, <laughs> but is this a little Goddard heavy? <laughs> oh, Lucas, you SOB. Uh, you made, bro. Jen slash Jessica, who is your favorite player all time and current player uh, and current playing favorite? Uh, oh, sorry. Who is your favorite player all time and current playing favorite player if they're not the same person? If they're not the same person, my favorite player all time. Oh boy. I feel like you I love think, Guy. Isn't Guy your guy? Guy is my current, like, you know, like I, I, I'll always have a soft spot in my heart for Guy because I remember before the Merle's match, he went back and forth so many times about whether or not he could actually beat him. And he felt like he was being set up to fail. I mean, and he's what? like, I feel like he goes, he goes, I feel like I'm being set up and no one believes in me. And I was like, people believe in you. I'm like, this is more just the thing where you got to believe in yourself, you know? Uh, but that's what, that's what that was about in the interview where he's like, I feel like you're the only one that believed in me, Jessica, uh, is because yeah. I really, I did have to give him a pep talk before that whole thing, um, to make sure he didn't psych himself out. But my favorite, as far as my favorite all time, I will always have a soft spot in my heart for Rachel Cushing, for Crusher, the yeah. way, the way she plays the game, but more so how like heavy her heart is when she doesn't perform up to what she considers her standards. 
no one was harder on Rachel Cushing than Rachel Cushing. And I feel like whenever she underperformed, she thought she was letting the league down um, when she was just like sometimes just a victim of bad luck. But she takes the game so seriously um, because she is passionate about it. You know what I mean? And I just I would watch her beat herself up before matches and I could see how genuinely nerve like I loved watching Rachel conquer her fear of like public performance and do those live events something she was not a huge fan of doing but there was something about watching her conquer that fear that like endeared her to me even more so rachel cushing would definitely be my my all time she's a pretty amazing choice i mean i think rachel rachel stole the hearts of of many many a schmodown fan you know um all right so uh we will any, any other stream labs right now got her uh lucas shashik uh I'm just kidding great show here. all around love all three of you guys Love you too, buddy. Commander in Chief Shashek. Salute, salute. Um, so uh, around this time, you know, we, we've now watched the first team match debut. And around this time, because I, I want to say, um, can you tell me the date, Goddard, that the Deep 13 match aired exactly? Oh, I just closed it. Give me one sec. Okay. Because um, I, I believe the Deep 13 match aired relatively early in the season. Like, I want to say that aired in February sometime, like middle of February kind of a thing would be my guess. Um, and I know around this time we had started to, oh, we got the sound. February 13th. Yeah, February 13th. Exactly. So stop, stop. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Jesus. So around this time, uh, and we're going to continue. I on remember now. my first YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jen, go the what, what was that, Jen? I missed that. What happened? Oh no. <laughs> what are you supposed to say? F's in the chat. <laughs> um, one of the things that has happened around this time, around February 13th, is we were watching matches air, you know. So we we watched the first, uh, you know, the Janine Riley match around this time. We saw the D13 match air around this time. And we're two weeks away at that point from building towards Atlanta, which was going to be the first major live event of this season. Because the, the one with Guy, I think it's, it's technically part of the season, but, like, there was a bunch of stuff that made it feel like it was the end of last season. It didn't, it didn't count, I guess, in some ways. Uh, it did, but there was like rules they couldn't use. Like they couldn't have any new wheel. There was no wheel slices allowed from the new list. A uh, bunch of stuff like that. And so we're building towards Atlanta. And I remember this is around the time backstage was really heating up. There was massive, massive drama going on on backstage. Roca was stepping in and he was hosting a show because I was out of town a lot. Roxy and Gucci had their thing going. This is when all that stuff about who's going to manage Dan, who's going to manage Ben started happening. You remember all this? Yes, I do. And like, it was just getting so bad. Dan's posting on Facebook with the big rant about it. I'm responding. Roka thinks everyone's out to get him. He's not letting the fourth round thing go. <laughs> He's pissed about it still. You know, and here's my thing, Jen. I've never gotten to really talk to you about this, but but my feeling was that Roka managing Dan in Atlanta with Gucci managing me was an obvious advantage in Dan's favor. Because his manager is a championship level player who knows the context and questions to challenge or not. And yeah, yours and yours drives a windowless van. Absolutely. Mine is the greatest manager in the history of the showdown <laughs> for reasons that don't include movie trivia. No, then, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> so here's my favorite part about this, about this conversation. There's all these things happening, calls behind the scenes going on. And we're gonna end tonight in, in, in a little bit here watching some of this match. But there's all these things going on and I called John at one point after, you know, we're all, I'm in New York for a work thing. I call him and I'm like, explain exactly what I just said to you. And John's like, what are you talking about? Finstock's the best manager in the game. I can't believe you actually think that I would give Dan an advantage. Finstock is obviously the best manager there is. And I was like, I was like, John, are you, who are you selling here? No one's, the cameras aren't on. We're on the phone together. Like, you're like, John, <laughs> I'm not dumb. <laughs> like, I was like, we, you know, a lot, you're a champion. Gucci is a great performer. He's a showman. I, he doesn't counsel me as a as a trivia player. That's not what he does. Like that. That's an obvious obvious imbalance. But people didn't agree with me. What do you think going into that situation? How would where 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 would you have stood on that? I feel like and listen. Uh, this comes from my an absolute place of love and just complete. I adore John. Okay, uh, but I also think John can cherry pick things that help his cause and to be able to say that he was a, a good teammate of Dan's and a good player, but also be able to add, Hey, I'm also a great manager to that roster would have, I mean, we had to buy him a bigger hat. Um, 
And I feel like he was definitely using that as his argument against you guys. A hundred percent. I felt like that was so unfair to you to be saddled with Gucci. I mean, like literally you could have picked anyone else, anyone. He's so good. <laughs> Tom is so good in interviews. Like I never have to worry about Tom. Like people ask always like, oh my God, do you, you know, is it hard to interview Tom? Like you've got your hands full. No, it's really not. Tom is one of the people like he makes my job the easiest. Cause I know he's going to say something ridiculous. It's just a matter of what. And um, and playing a yes and game with him, you know, because it's going to be something insane. But like you said, he does not have the movie trivia. I think he's proved that on multiple occasions, even if they were just limited matches. Unless it's something that he's an idiot savant in, like Rocky. <laughs> he's not going to help. Like, unless the last question is about a Sylvester Stallone film, no. Like, there's no advantage to you whatsoever. I think Gucci's in the chat right now. I think he, I think the Gucci verse has got to be him. Unless somebody oh. decided it. <laughs> well, that's fine. If he wants to come join us, Ben, you uh, you guys should send him the link. We should have yeah. him on right now. I, I, I don't have know. no problem we're, with this. We're rewatching matches. I don't know. Why Christian, not? Christian's come gonna be mad. On. All right, if you can send you can send him the link. Christian can... told us we can do whatever we want. I asked. Him, <laughs> I was like, can I just have random guests on? I'm trying yeah. to get us a really special guest tomorrow, Ben. I oh yeah. Yeah. Anything, anything you can talk about? No, not yet. We don't want to talk nope, about it. Yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, I hope. Yeah, I, I hope we get that special guest, uh, Gucci. If you're watching and you wanna you wanna jump in, uh, and, and daughter wants to send you the link, let's do it. But uh, just reflecting. I don't think it is. I don't think it is him though. Okay. Unless he's got like 17 different uh, screen names, I feel like it's not him. He says I am uh, in in here, so I think it might be him. That's what a troll would say, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Ben. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He so, was just uh, a Tim. Did you give him your social security number too, yeah, Ben? Yeah, and your mom's me. your mom's maiden name. <laughs> Jugger Bear fifty three says we all know Gucci has a million burner accounts. Yeah, it's it's, it's true. Um, so uh, so anyway, this around that time though, that's kind of the drama that's brewing as we start to build towards that, and that that's very much sort of dominating the conversation. Everybody's everybody's focusing on this Roxy versus Gucci, Roxy versus mm -hmm. Gucci. He's an idiot. Is the Finstar exchange going to blow up? How does Dan feel about it? All that type of stuff. Um, so let's get, let's get to our next match to watch here. So we've, we've just, let me just pull my list back up. Um, our next match we are going to watch here is Adam Witt versus Sean Sullivan. And we're going to watch the ending of it because I think these are two guys that are going into the Star Wars tournament. Um, it's upcoming here. You can watch it exclusively here on Twitch. Um, but the ending of this match is pretty great. Adam Witt had, had come into this match, you know, it was one half of the movie guys last year. He had been drafted. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew that he was going to compete in Star Wars. That wasn't, that wasn't part of the sale, like the sales pitch on Adam Witt. And Sullivan, you know, Sullivan had been a fan. He was somebody who was a fan of the show. He'd come to taping yeah. and he gets drafted, um, you know, with, with Jilly. She's great. And, and everybody starts to kind of take a liking to Sullivan. He comes in full character. Sullivan has, does a great job in this match. But you're so right, Ben. Like, I never once looked at Witt and was like, oh, yeah, expert Star Wars player. Oh, yeah. I was like, maybe like Will Ferrell movies. <laughs> In round number three, so we get to so we get to this match here. Wits losing, you know. It looks like yeah, going into it in a match like a Star Wars match. So, five point question can be everything. So all, all you got to figure is if you, so this is five and Wit gets his, could very easily be over. I wouldn't pick three if I were you. Eight, <laughs> eleven, three and eight. And this was Suckers a last numbers, minute right? sub in for uh, for <laughs> Sean. He wasn't supposed to play today either. Game's going okay, on. okay. What do you got? Uh, I will pick. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go with. Uh, oh my gum won't come out. <laughs> go. Okay. Um, I'll go with one. Okay. Nothing that for me. Two. Yeah. Here you want. No. Twelve. Okay. One and two. <laughs> twelve. One, two, and no, twelve. Yeah. One and two. <laughs> <laughs> if he's so cavalier in a few minutes. Right, We're just having fun up here, Mark. You your questions. Rachel's going to be asking Sean his questions. Adam, you selected number one mm -hmm. for your two-point question. For two points and to cut the lead to two. Sometimes being a fan like Sean was can be yeah. such an advantage because you he, he really cares. Like the fans that care the most who show up at the tapings, they really get a feel for that room. So when they actually sit up there. Mm -hmm. 
it's a little less, I think, nerve wracking than, than the people who are like just less yeah. familiar. You know, Sean knows the well, sound. Well, it, it, it's one thing if you've been in the room. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if you've been in the room watching matches, then yeah, I feel like it's an advantage. Otherwise, I feel like if you're just a fan that's watched at home, you have no idea what those lights feel like when you get out there. And I think that it's an absolute disadvantage. You know, like if you're just a fan watching from home, it doesn't replicate the nerves that go on in that studio. Episode three, Revenge of totally the Totally agree. Especially now that we've had, you know, we've had audiences for this, this past season and a half or so. Okay. Yeah. To Yoda, attachment leads to what? So let's see how Wit, not really a veteran yet, works through this question. Because I've watched him a couple times now. Incorrect. Looking for <laughs> jealousy. Oh. Attachment leads to jealousy, and jealousy leads. He should have taken his time there. He should have taken his time there. He has three JTs left. I don't know what he's doing. Oh. Rookie, rookie move. Rookie move. Rookie move, and just also not having a teammate next to him, and that 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 just might be him not knowing the strategy as well as yeah. Yeah. Paul does. Paul's very big on strategy. Standing in his way yeah. is Adam Witt, and a question that he selected the number two for five points and the lead. Adam, your category is episode one, The Phantom Menace. Lucky me. This is a hell, this is a moment right here. This, I, I just walked out of the room because I, I was did. there for this tape day to grab a drink, I think. Or well, I, water, I don't remember what I was doing. But go, everything was on the internet. The room, the room explodes here. In episode one, what is the name of the Nemoidian captain of the Trade Federation droid control ship? It's the one that Sidious quotes, didn't want in his sight again. Oh. And the when the, the star the deep Star Wars cuts like this, Jen, it, it feels like a different language to me. I'm like, I Oh yeah. I literally just had to be like, is that Spanish? Huh. Repeat the question. You can do so that. You can repeat. Yeah, if he, and this feels like he doesn't know it. One, what is there's the at least Federation? a level of confidence in his face. Trade Federation droid control ship. The one that Sidious quotes didn't want in his sight again. It's played well by Wit as a as a showman here. He really sells that he doesn't know it. He might not until the very end. Just because you that's your move, Ben, doesn't mean it's everybody else's move. <laughs> Second I think he's so busy trying to make pulls. Menace. What is the name of the mo what is that the he's not thinking of? Oh, I better draw this out. No. The one that's Sidious. He's got an idea in his head already. You can tell by the look on his face. He's just trying to talk himself into is that right or not? That's you can see it in his eyes. He's yeah, looking. of course. Two more seconds. He's nodding. I gotta just I gotta just wager this is thinking, but I have one more repeat. Four. Dolte Dauphine. It's a tough five pointer and he got it right. Wow. Wow. Room goes crazy. Yeah. Wow. That's a hell of a moment. That's that's a great, that's a great moment. Yeah. A hug from Kaiser. Game recognized wow. game. That's a deep, deep pull. He needed all Milk in the camera. To get there, but it's <laughs> <awesome. laughs> Milk in the camera. I mean, good. even Sean has to smile at yeah. that pull. It's going to be a good question. Uh, for Win or lose, it's going to be a fun question for Jen Sturge. But anyway, so, so Sullivan goes on to win the match. Um, yeah. But that's, that's an exciting moment. It's, it's great, too, for Wit because, you know, he's a player that I think last year, going through the end of the season, Jen, with the movie guys, he got a little overshadowed by Preston. I think a lot of people were watching Paul Preston. Yeah. He was the A guy. He was the A, a guy on the team. Wit has one early guess. He, like, guesses that Lee one l directed a movie that was just, like, a total, just, like, there's no way. It could never work. But he guesses it anyway. And I think, you know, he felt bad about that. He's talked about that. But a funny team and definitely one of those players where it's nice that he has a prestigious moment. Even though he doesn't win the match, I think people are excited about him um, and, and excited about, you know, possibly this, this Star Wars tournament where I believe – in the first round, you know, we can look it up here really quickly. Um, but I believe in the I first think I round. I saw that he has Molly, no? That sounds right. I think you're I think you I think you're dead on about that. So yeah, I'm I'm excited about Sean Sol about Sean Sullivan and about Adam Witt in this tournament. Um, do you have any thoughts on where where your money is on this tournament? Because because uh, obviously Alex Damon's not playing, but you got Scrimshaw in there, Devalanta, Laura Kelly, Adam Witt, Sean Sullivan, Ace. Got I'm really pulling. I'm pulling for the ladies on this one. I'm really pulling for the ladies on this one. Um, pulling for Laura and I'm pulling for Molly. And I'm sad that Wood has to face her in the first round because I think behind every great man is a great woman. And <laughs> look, she they, there's they host it. They host their show together. True. She helps. She helps Alex study. You know, I just. 
I feel too the force is very strong in this one, you know. And I and I think Laura Kelly's had some great showings, and I just feel like corruption is due. And I know Shannon is hungry, hungry to win this tournament. Uh, and so I think that that's why they're gonna they're gonna pull really hard for Laura. And I know that Shannon's gonna really have her training up until that match. It's just such a competitive league, and and the really interesting thing about it is there's there's like so little extra work you can do in the Star Wars division because it's yeah. such a limited amount of information. You have to just keep watching them and keep taking notes and try, just you know continuing to try to figure out how can I outsmart my opponent here and go deeper, go one step further than them. Um, and I, I'm definitely excited to see that one. I know Dimolanta, you know, he's an exchange guy. He's really motivated. He's really excited. Um, we we drafted him with we drafted him with our fifth round pick, which was our first actual pick in the draft. We went heavy on Dimolanta. We mm -hmm. Uh, even though Gucci, like a moron, doesn't pronounce his name correctly sometimes, which I've told him, <laughs> I've told him ten times out of ten, if you ever mispronounce one of our faction mates' names on a show again, you get you just get punch yourself in the face. So now he just calls him. How, he how does he pronounce it? He just says Dilamanta. Um, it, it's Dimalanta, but he's done it so many times. It's like when people call me Steiger. I'm like, where did you get an I? I don't. Yeah, but Gucci's he easy. sound good. He calls him AD now, so he doesn't ever make okay. it, which is good. But yeah, I got a lot of faith in him. I'm really excited about it. Uh, let's let's um, we've got it looks like we've got about 45 minutes or so left, and we have a couple matches left to watch. Um, Goddard is. Oh, but, in here. but you, I wanted to mention though the reason that I'm cheering for for Molly and Laura. Well, so if Laura wins, great. I'm happy for Corruption. They need some points on the board right now. I feel like they've had some tough, tough losses this season. Like their record doesn't adequately show what they're capable of or how well they've actually played. They've just narrowly missed some. Um, but I just am worried about Molly having to play Alex one day. And it's like, yeah, there's a belt on the line, but so is sleeping on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I think, I think, you know, I know that I know that Molly was courted by a lot of different teams. And I know that Roxy had courted her. She talked about that. And and the reason Molly didn't want to be on the team with Roxy was because she didn't want to be on the same team as Alex. She wants she wants to compete against him, I think. So I think oh, absolutely. Will, oh, I know I that. Will, I know I that. I think she wants to strike kind of strike out on her own. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see what she does. Um, let's bring Goddard back on for a couple stream labs and super chats before we watch these last Let's do it. Uh, from Jugger, not enough, uh, not enough Goddard, hashtag Bandit Brigade. Also, uh, Bateman, my dude, when are you going to join a faction with a more respectable manager? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah Morris, if the original inner geekdom bracket was based on rankings and was then changed because it was unfair to a team, Ryan, why not make it fair across the board by just switching Hannah and one of the swag players to give everyone an equal footing? Love all you do. Wow, um, Jerry Morris being nice to you. Yeah, I know Jerry's in my corner. I would I would say I would say that there's a level of balance that Christian's always trying to achieve with these types of things. There's also a level of showmanship he's trying to achieve with these things. I think it's really important to find the balance between the two because you know, he obviously he obviously doesn't want to just have the Finstock exchange get an even shot and do just a little bit better than every other faction at the end of the year. And then just, there was never any competition. That's not what he wants. He wants it to be competitive. So when he's going to look at this, he's going to, he's going to try to not make it so that like one team just gets totally screwed, but he's also not going to just try to make it a hundred percent. Even when in reality, there's only 16 slots in the tournament and there's nine managers. So already the play-in games created, a, a, there's a different situation. If there was eight managers, it'd be a different story, but because there's nine, you already know it's not going to be balanced. So he's doing his best to balance rankings along with opportunity, I think, to create the best possible show, but also keep it competitive. And I, I get that. I, I, you and and storylines. You like even I want to see Brandon Hanna play Saul. Like Saul replaced, like effectively replaced them on the den in, as inner geekdom, and that's why he got traded. So that's that's a great match. I don't want to see I don't want to see that get switched around for anything. You excited to watch that match, Goddard? You, you have, I'm you very have, excited. I mean, you got Saul. I saw, <laughs> saw the minute he got drafted was like, I'm purely inner geekdom. I can't wait to play. So he's been hungry for this since January. So we'll see. And I, Hannah's I, had a rough, rough run has, when it comes to inner geekdom. He's got a fire inside him and for good reason. So I think both these guys have a, have a lot to prove. Uh, a Torres. Hey guys, great show. Sounds like you guys are shitting on Roka tonight. Put some respect <laughs> on the outlaw's name. No, never. No, not never, at never, all. Never doing that. In fact, uh, you, if you guys really want to see, you know, strong interaction, I actually just posted an interview with John this morning. I, I did an episode of a great conversation over on nerds and suits. It's an hour long. 
Um, it's really cool. We talk about a lot of stuff, including the behind the scenes stuff on backstage. But I think a lot of you guys wondered if Broco and I were going to kill each other. Um, we, we talk about the conversation that we actually had behind the scenes that got that ship righted. Um, and he talks about all kinds of fun. He talks about girls breaking up with him because of the outlaw, like Tinder messages being sent. Like, what is this? I can't date you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, pause, pause. Yeah. Why is that in his Tinder bio? <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you should, you should, you should watch it. It's, it's really interesting. He says like basically. But why was that in his Tinder bio? No, it wasn't. Oh, it wasn't. champion. That'd be so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think, I think it's people googling John Roca, and when you do it, what comes up is these promos of him in the cowboy hat. And I think that's what he was saying is basically they did any research oh on it. That's what they'd come up with. I, I was like, I was like, that totally makes sense because. The outlaw character in Showdown has brought a lot to Roka's career. It's built his following. It's a huge part of his life. So, like, he's got to be honest about it. But, like, he was like, it's not the same thing as dating, you know, you're dating a girl in your 20s or something like that. I'm in my 40s. You know, he's basically like, you, you come across a woman in her 40s, she knows exactly what she wants. And it's not a guy in a cowboy hat. You know, like. Cowboy hats are fine. I think it's more just guys cutting promos on people. And they're, that's why I asked Andrew. I was like, when you got your new girlfriend, I go, when, when you first brought her in, and I think he was still a heel at the time. And he's like yelling at everyone. I go, how do you explain to her what's going on? Yeah, no, I mean, that, that's what I said to him. I was like, you know, and I, I've never been in a situation before um, where that was happening to me. I had no following. The last time that I was like single and actively dating, like I just didn't have that. I didn't. And, and I can't imagine being in John's position. So um, anyway, but but moving past that, uh, we are definitely not kind of crap on Roka. I mean, he's a legend. I think we all know. That. No, not at all. Um, all right, so I think let's pull up this next match. This next match is another, uh, it's, it's Corruption versus The Exchange. And we're going to talk about a player that I think people are very excited about. This is a player that's in the Intergeekin tournament. Um, and that's the Barbarian, Craig Gagne, who um, had unfortunately and very tragically lost his wife recently and has really just dove into the mm -hmm. schmodown. As his, that is his temple, his retreat from the, 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 the really tough situation that he's in. Um, the community rallied together to support Craig. He's already so beloved. So we can watch his intro here because it's pretty great. It's pretty fantastic. He's I so like passionate. Pain too. She's uh, got a Star Wars shirt on. She is ready to go here. And Clee took this match last minute. Awesome. Like, let's be clear. She just happened yeah. to be there watching matches and someone didn't show up. So Clee had to step in. So props to her on just even having the stones to step in and do that last minute. I don't think I could have. I think they both did. I think this was when uh, Vavita got sick. It was supposed to be Vavita and Cameron Rice. Yep. And then both Clee and Craig just happened to be there watching. Well, when you're a newer player, I mean, it sucks, but you kind of have to roll with that. That's, that's a rule that just comes with the territory is like you, you're going to get thrown matches last minute. And if you don't take them, you might not get another one. You know? Yeah, so he comes out. <laughs> it's amazing. Where's Elvis? Oh, there it is, yeah. From this angle. Oh, it's there. The Muppet movie, chasing them down the street, yeah. going to Hollywood. Oh, uh, his right. name is Elvis, and I didn't kill him. Oh, right. He's just <laughs> the gimmick is great. The gimmick with the with the scarf and talking to the scarf. Let's talk about that for a second, Jen, because because Gagner is already becoming really beloved. He goes perfect in this match. Really shows up. Really shows people that he's here to play. He means business. I think everybody knows he's going to be a player to be you know a force to be reckoned with. I think people are wondering how he's going to do in the Intergeekin tournament. I think he's got a real shot at it. But you know. I, when somebody brings in a gimmick to Schmodown, it's kind of the same thing as when they bring in a gimmick to wrestling, right? Doesn't work every time. You don't always no, know. You try no, it, you there's been it so work. many failed gimmicks. I talk about this all the time. I'm like, just bad, bad gimmicks that you're just like, oh, how, who let who let that one? Who sat down at that meeting and pitched that? And they were like, I was going to do my Vince McMahon impression, but then I realized I would cuss when I did it. So I don't want to get us kicked off. <laughs> I don't want Fs in the chat. Okay. But anyways, um, but yeah, I, I, there's been plenty of times. What, what, what was a bad gimmick? Uh, Shockmaster. Who's that? You don't know what, if you don't know what that is, Google it. You'll understand the minute you see it. You'll be like, oh yeah, that's bad. That's terrible. Didn't like Triple H come in once with like an Irish accent or something like that that went away. Wasn't that like a thing um, you did at one point? I don't remember that. And I, I mean, I, I mean, John Cena did his whole like thugonomics thing, right? Isn't that wasn't that his thing? Thugonomics, yeah, but like that's so bad that it's like good. Like it's okay, the, nostal yeah. the nostalgia of it makes thugonomics good. Yeah, um, I, I remember I uh, 
I, See, I, there you go. There you go. Who was like, let's give him a giant fur coat and bedazzle a stormtrooper helmet, have him come bursting through the wall. And if you can find a clip of this, find a clip of this entrance. Wow. Cause, cause I no, remember no, no. you don't understand, Ben. He trips on his entrance. <laughs> so he was supposed to burst through this wall, like all powerful. And instead he just. That's incredible. Oh. Yeah, now yeah, that I, is a bad gimmick. I remember um, I came in. I remember I came in and when I introduced the briefcase uh, as as I was the boss, I think, at that point. Because I know I was, I was big time for one or two matches when I started singles. And then I changed to the boss. And I made the briefcase. I, I made it myself or whatever. And then I and I would come in with the briefcase. i open it. And then I would put a mirror on the desk. And I could look at myself while I was playing and then there was a headshot on the back of the mirror so that people could watch me. And I was calling it the mirror of genius. My And Christian was like, maybe you call it your genie or something like that. I was like, this is a good idea. And so I tried that. I think I came, I think I called it the genie thing once and I, you know, I put it down, but it didn't totally work. And the out. minute it came out of your mouth, you were like, yeah, I'm never saying that again. It was real dumb. I, that was, that was one I tried. Another one I tried was, um, I remember when I did my promo, uh, I did my promo in New York to open the 2019 season when I was calling out Guy when they, they hid me and I busted in. And I think I ended, I did my whole speech and then I think I say, you've been dismissed or something like that. And I was like, I'll start saying that. That'll be cool. And like not a single person talked about it and I just never did it again. I think Brienne had done the dismissed thing. Yeah, so it, was, it was kind of similar, I remember. Um, Gimmick so infringement. <laughs> Two tap here says the briefcase was so dumb. I, I actually the briefcase I thought worked. The briefcase was the was the piece of that whole gimmick that I thought was fine. Um, because it was so douchey to have a briefcase that said the boss. But you know, I also stopped using it. So I didn't hate the boss. What I hated was you having an assistant. The Brandon Hannah thing? Are you kidding? Oh, that's, like one my, that's like one of my favorite gimmicks. It was terrible. I don't. I almost said something, and then I stopped myself because I like. I literally don't know what I'm allowed to say in here. Um, like as far as words go, it's not a cuss word, but mm, I'll save it. Hit me up on Twitter if you want to know what it is. <laughs> it's hilarious. Trust me, it would really uh, make you laugh. But anyways, Ben Stunt Double. Yeah, no, no, he's not Ben Stunt Double. Like at yeah. no point would you ever confuse those two people for each other ever. Well, I think I think the funniest thing about the Brandon Hanna gimmick was that the reason it came to be, and some of you guys probably don't know this, but it's worth like laughing about for a second. So Brandon is pretty good with like a green screen and editing. Like he's very smart. He does a lot of cool content at home, and he was a fan. Nerds. And he had he had come in and filmed a segment as me. He had he had like put on the suit. And I was when action started, we used to do these like really stupid accents. We they, they were like they weren't hard accents. They were like like a little Brooklyn tinge or something. I don't even know what the hell it was. But so Brandon would come in and do these videos, and he'd like walk in and be like, "I'm Ben Bateman. What's going on, everybody?" Like, and and, and it was really funny. He totally bought into it. And so we were like, "This is great. This guy's committed." And so that he was there to tape him one day, and I was like, "You should come out." And, and I'll come in on a phone call afterwards. Like, I'm too important to do my own entrance. And uh, and that was the thing. It started to get him screen time in Shmoda. And then obviously now he's a you know, he's a real player. So hmm. I'm just looking through the comments. You guys are pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what's, what's next on the docket? Yeah, so I think uh, we only have one match left to watch. And we can talk a little bit about uh, the, the fallout of this match. But we'll watch a little bit more of it. This is actually the Atlanta match. So this is... This is Dan versus Bateman, uh, and we're going to pick it up. This is a five rounder. You know, this was the this was the second live event of the year. It's the last live event the Schmodown has gotten to run this year. Um, but it was before all the matches we've been you know seeing air now, and this is back when, when we didn't know any of this COVID stuff. And this is on I think February 29th, and it's a week later that we all stop doing anything. So God, that's so nuts to me. It's so nuts to me. Yeah, and I and I had really prepared hard for Dan. I had been in New York. The, the previous week, I, I had gotten on the phone with him to talk about the manager situation. And when you know, I came back to LA for one day, and then I went out to Atlanta, and uh, we can pick it up here. But you know what happens is Dan goes nine points in round one, I get six. If round two, question correct, they gain. I pick up a point on Dan. On, um, so we go into round three, the betting round. Step on up and give it a spin. Yeah, I'm like got the sweet scarf going on. 
<laughs> it's here we go. So I had spent strategy the, the previous weeks, the couple weeks prior to this, studying and training for this moment, Jen. There's a slice on the wheel that, that I put on that I haven't revealed yeah. to anyone. But Tyler Perry. That's the one I did put on the wheel. Know that. <laughs> and so I, I hit Tyler Perry here. And I'm excited because I know this is my moment, right? As soon as it happens, Gucci comes over to me and I say to him, got to bet three. You know, we got to bet three. That's our only shot. We got to hope that Danny bets even at least one. With an extra from the movie Jaws. To see <laughs> I think I get pretty fired up here. I think I, I don't hit Gucci, but I think... I think I'm just like, yeah, we got to go for three. Category. I need a category here. Five. Yeah, I'm like, all right, I'm ready to do this. Tyler Perry. Atlanta's own Tyler Perry. All right. It makes sense. It makes sense. Tyler Perry. Movie. This was such a ball. Like, this was such Tyler a ballsy Perry, pull, right? Right. Your points. Okay, man, right. I got Because I'm got betting three on something that I, to be honest with you, I've never seen a single Tyler Perry movie in my life. Man. I say at the end that I watched them all, but I've never seen one. Here we go. Dan, gotcha. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. In the film, Daddy's Little Girl, Gabrielle <laughs> Union plays a lawyer who falls in love with a single dad played by Idris Elba. What is his blue collar profession? Asks crap. Yeah, it's exactly right. I did top level studying on this category hard. I was ready. And this is exactly the kind of question that if I hadn't gone as deep as I went, I would have gotten sunk here. To think of it and, and then write it down. Five. Because I believe. Three. Two. Repeat the question. Okay. Because I write down the correct answer, but I start to second guess myself. Plays a lawyer. Who and I erase it. Christian told me he could see my board from where he's sitting here. And he saw me write the correct answer and erase it. And he thought to himself, this kid's going to get TKO'd. What is he doing? Uh, Tense. And five. Four. This is like probably the most hyped in a match I've ever been. <laughs> Dan, how many points? Zero. And construction worker? Incorrect, but you don't lose any points. You chose how many points? Three. And you said mechanic. That's correct. Oh! Yeah. Wow. 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 So Ben wow. Damon takes the lead. Massive. Massive. Him betting zero points there. I look at Roka, throw my hands up. <laughs> Brilliant strategy on Merle yeah. to bet nothing. Merle bet nothing. And Merle betting zero wins in the match is the crazy yeah. thing. Yeah. Baby just yeah. pulled one out of his hat. Brilliant, brilliant play by Merle who bet nothing, and he's only down by two as opposed to be down a lot more. Smart. Very smart. All right. So we get so, into two. Merle told me recently on an interview I did with him. It is <laughs> not rattled here yet. Go. Oh. But he's definitely getting there. He's definitely getting because he was like he, he said he assumed I was going to put Tyler Perry on the wheel. He figured I'd be ready for. Second, I'm going to stroll over to. Dan, this is the crazy thing. Dan told me he was prepared to get zero points in the speed round. Five. Uh, looks like my. Uh, looks like my. Uh, my mic. Good. I was. I was just muting the video. Still playing. I'm just muting it so you guys can talk in between rounds. Oh, cool. Perfect. Okay. Cool. 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 Um. So, so, so uh, he tells me, he tells me in this interview that he was prepared to get zero points in the speed round. He says, I'm a player. If you watch my matches, you know, it's not a strength for me, that speed round. So I had to be in a position going into that last round where I could beat you because I, I assumed I was going to lose every point in speed round. Mm -hmm. and, and so it gets to the, it gets to the speed round and, and my, I'm so jacked up here. I had, I had borrowed, uh, Kevin Smets bought these buzzers. Do you know this? No. Smets, Smets ordered a set of buzzers. Naturally. Like, yeah. that's the least shocking detail I've learned. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, the guy that literally, he trains for Schmodown by, uh, like, recording it into voice notes and then plays them back to himself while he's, like, running Rocky style. Like, the stuff yeah. that, they make, that they make him do at the dungeon is absolutely insane. It's incredible. He's, he's I mean, yeah. Smets is someone to learn from, so... I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I'll do it. I'll do it again. So I think he's frustrated. So I think what there? turns green. I get called. I'll, I'll do it again. Right. I'll do another one. One more. All right. Because I buzz in there. They're just seeing if the buzzers work, and they go, "Where did Dan Merle go to?" And I buzz in. I go, "FSU." <laughs> he's like, "That was just my question, man." What is Steven Spielberg? Hey, hey, can I need to? Can I thank you? Right, I appreciate it. Do something a little. I want to hear Christian. Thank do something you. a little harder. 
What is Steven Spielberg's first Ooh. name? <laughs> Steven. Thank you. All right. Here we go. All right. So it's up and working. Mark, are you ready? You good? All right. So, Ben, are you ready? Oh, yeah. All right. Dan, are you ready? <laughs> Ellis, yeah, wait for Ellis to say your name before. It doesn't matter if it lights up green. Let Ellis. I'm pretty sure I ignore that completely. I don't let him say the full name ever. I think I just wait till my thing's green and just say the answer every time. Which actress is the lead in the rom com 27 draft? Catherine Heigl. Yes, one point. All right. Question two Which MCU film received a best picture? Infinity War. Incorrect. Yeah. And I knew it was wrong when it came out of my mouth, but yeah, I got a buzz in before, before you know the answer. That's the only way to steal it. Point 17. Black Panther was the answer. Oh, please tell me you don't go negative. No, no, no. The 2019 film, Us. Jordan Peele. Yes. All right. Yeah, you're feeling yourself, though. This there is we not go. Gonna... Question four. In what year were the comedies Anchorman, Dodge? 2004. Yes. Uh, it's so hard to watch because this is like where it's peaking. Final question. <laughs> Who plays Grocer, the chief rival, the John Cusack's character in Grocer? Dan Aykroyd. One more point. Dan. All right, so you're up five. Ben Bateman. Which we all know the difference between five and six in the final round is everything. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the whole entire game. Um, yeah, and going into that final round, I mean, this is where Dan told me. He said to John, I just want to go out there, just want to answer my questions and make him beat me. You know, but I, it was yeah. a good game. He's on fire tonight. You know, he was, he was, he was, def and John, to his credit, said, John, you know, you, you buck up. I don't want to hear that. You go out there, we play to win. You don't give up. He's got to answer his questions or you've got this. Um, and the, the hardest thing about this match for me, Jen, is looking back, we didn't watch the first or the second round. The scarf? I know. You shouldn't have done that. I love that. You don't like the scarf? I love the scarf. No. <laughs> no. Calm. There's only two men ever that can pull off scarves, and that's Lenny Kravitz and Chris Jericho, and that's it. Like oh, literally, I'm so that's glad it. you said Lenny Kravitz. I was hoping that giant <laughs> scarf that got memed to death was going to be one of those picks. I mean, obviously. If Jericho can do it, why can't I do it, Jen? That's what I got to ask. Because he's Chris F's in the chat, <laughs> Jericho. I mean, he's a badass wrestler. He pulls off a scarf. I'm not saying I'm Chris Jericho over here, but why can't I at least no, try the scarf? all of the F's in the chat right now. Ben, I don't even know what F's in the chat means, but it can't be good. So I'm just putting them all on you. No, you can't. You can't wear a scarf. I think because you lose eventually, spoilers, uh, you can't ever wear a scarf ever again on stage. I don't know about that. I I will have to say that I've worn a scarf twice in matches on stage live. I've lost them both. Yeah. All right, Dan. I think that that means that you're not meant to wear a damn scarf. It's not your gimmick. The TKO here. He's gonna go. Uh, with... If I was your manager, if Jessica was your manager, category eight for Dan. No more scarves. You chose for Bateman. That's war movies. I like the scarf. Yeah. Two pointer. <laughs> Who is who stars as the lead? Anthony Swafford in the war film. Jarhead. Jake Gyllenhaal. Two points for Dan Merle. All right. Pretty easy. So As it should be two point. I mean, I could have answered that. Yes. To tie the game. He has now got to category sixteen. That's his three pointer. <laughs> that is his three pointer. Let the man have a scarf. Damn it! Says uh, well six eighty four. I agree. No, I'm I'm laughing at the green flamingo. It was like scarf choked you out though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, See, this is a pretty hard three-pointer. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> 1974, adaptation of Murder on the Orient Express. Albert Finney. Tie game. Tie game. Yeah, see, I wouldn't have pulled it. So it's a tie game. He avoids a TKO. It bounces back to Ben Bateman. Now, Ben, Ben can put it right back to Dan with just answering his two-pointer here. Yeah. Ben, you selected category number three, and Mark Mosley's number corresponds to action adventure. Okay. I can do that. Oh, okay, here we go. And your question. For two points, who plays... <laughs> excuse me. 
in the world of action adventure. Oh, sorry. They're really struggling with us. Yeah, what is the subtitle of the 2003 sequel to Charlie's Angels? Full throttle. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? No, that's right. Can I give the full title or just the subtitle? Five. Just the subtitle's fine. Four. Full throttle. Two, Two points. points. All right. So you bounce it back. There we stand. Dan Merle. Do you not remember how this ends? I wasn't there. Five pointer. Uh, then it bounces back to the I only know the outcome. However, it's a tough. The fives are tough. I won't talk about it much because it'll just probably piss me off too much, but it's 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 a tough it's a tough setup here. Dan? I'll watch it. Rom-coms. Rom -coms. Here you go. Michael Sarah and Kat Denning starred in this 2008 Peter Salet rom-com about two strangers who go in search of their favorite band secret show. Got her. Pause real quick. Jen, do you know the answer to this question? I can't read it on the screen because I have old lady eyes, but what does it say? Michael Sarah, and Kat Dennings were in a movie together once. Do you know what that movie mm -hmm. is? Because <laughs> that's the, if you don't immediately know it, then that makes me feel a little better. But Michael Sarah, and Kat Dennings star in this 2008 rom-com directed by Peter Solit about two strangers who go in search of their favorite band's secret show. Um, was that um, Nick and Norris or? That is, the, but there's, do you don't know the full title? Uh, Nick and Nora's uh, infinite playlist or some something stupid like that. That is exactly the answer to the question. Okay, but it took you a second, which is fair. So we can go back to this now. I wouldn't get it under those circumstances. I'm getting it here because there's no like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Nothing. Infinite playlist. Totally. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. He made it. Merle hits it. It's gonna make him work. He hit it. it. But his but his three is pretty hard. So if the three Put is your harder, shirt wait. down, Gucci. Oh. <laughs> Still has his three pointer. Yes. So he could tie it. He could but tie even it. if he misses this question, he can win it outright with the five point quest. Yes. Right. All right. Ah, oh, makes me so sad that I didn't just. All right. Here one more go. point in this match anywhere, Jen. Black Panther, and Night Before Christmas, and round one. And I just win right here. Ben, that's, that's uh, it. Three point question. Nice ball, that can tie. Thank you. You with Dan Merle. You chose number seven, and Joe Theismann's number corresponds to classic. Hmm. Ferris, uh, we, we will read the stream up, see if Justin, this is over. Who stars as an aging Broadway actress named Margot Channing in the Academy Award-winning film All About Eve? I see her face. Totally. His three is harder than my three, for sure, but it's, it's interesting that we both have... Kind of classics as our three point questions. Is he Davis? Tie game. Tie game. I do okay. think both of your threes are harder than both of your fives. All right. You, no way. My five, unless you know that movie intimately, you can't guess my five. It's impossible. You can't just guess a name. I think it's a generational be. thing. Yeah, that's, but, that's my opinion. With the five pointer, that could decide it all. If Ben Bateman hits it, he remains the champion. If he misses, we go to sudden death. The five point question, Mark. The scenario that is not unlikely, Christian. Yep. Uh, ben Bateman to win it outright in regulation. I wonder and if you know this, Jen. Beautiful belt he has adorning his. I wonder program. if I wrote it. Ben, you selected number 17. No, PJ wrote this the day of, he told me. Oh. And Doug Williams' number corresponds to Judd Apatow movies, Judd Apatow films. Could you the right. For five points and the win. In the Judd Apatow written and produced film Heavyweights, what is the name of the Tony Perkis's new head counselor who is from, quote, far away? Just need the One first name. -E what's the, what's the, read it again? It's a badly worded question, I agree, but it's, they're asking in the movie, there's a character who is referred to as being from far away, he was basically like an assistant to Tony Perkis, effectively. He's a new counselor. What movie? Heavyweights. The one where Ben the one where Ben Stiller plays the fat camp counselor. There, the, okay. the instructor. This is kind of my point. So if you like, I, I always equate this to when you say generational, cool. you know, so like old school was a movie that I watched a lot. Like mm -hmm. it came out in 03. Last one. 
I love that movie. In the Who Judd is the name of the old guy? And Let me read it right? one more time. Heavyweights. The Judd Apatow written and produced Heavyweights. What is the name of the Tony Perkis's new head counselor who is from, quote, far away? Why is it the name of the Tony Perkis's new head counselor? Why is it worded that way? Is that the name of the camp? Four. You should never name a fat camp Perkins. That's like the fuck yeah. my gripe. And we go to sudden death. Yeah, I guess jazz. So if you pause really quickly here, Goddard. So my, my point is, I think it might have just been, I think it, the question might just be like worded wrong. I think you might have meant to say the name of the counselor. Um, I think, I'm not totally sure, but like I, we watched old school a lot. Blue is a character that everybody, you're my boy. Blue. Yeah, exactly. Blue, right? Like everybody knows that. It's not like the guy that plays Blue is famous. You just know. It's not like he's building the top five. You're so my boy, who is it? The name of the character is Lars. It's just that you just have to know that the character's name is Lars. That's that's why I was saying like I think when you talk about the the whole uh, the whole idea of five point questions, if they're not guessable unless you know them, they're very different than questions that you can just say like two actors can you name the movie and you can just guess a movie that they were in together. Maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong, or yeah, you know what I mean. Like that that's the difference between fives, and that's why that's why watching it back, it's like, if I don't know the answer to the question, there's no way I'm going to get the answer to the question. It's so there's funny no when I was writing questions, like one of the criteria, like I would get notes back being like, you weren't allowed to ask questions like that specifically for this reason. Yeah. I mean, again, but if, if that had been my, my three and my five was my five or, or if, you know, Dan's three and his five are switched. It's one of those things where don't let it come down to one point because no, I should have uh, I should have just played better earlier. Um, so yeah, we go to overtime and uh, we entertainment. Man, Atlanta got their no their money's worth. Yeah, this was a good one. All At this right. point, I know I've lost. Well, for Dan, that's, that's the hard part. Is at this point, I know I've lost because I I'm not going to beat Dan in pure who knows more trivia. Like I'm just not going. That's not going to happen. I would really? have to get very. I'd have to get very lucky. I mean, Dan's older, oh. but also that's not my strength. Right, my strength is strategy. Round number mm -hmm. one. We're gonna not raw it. knowledge. I know a lot, but I don't think if we go heads answer. up ten questions, I'm going to beat nope. him almost ever. Each question is worth a point. No penalty for missing a question. Here's where it gets tricky. If both of you miss it, we go to the next question. If both of you get it right, we move to the next question. If one of you gets it right and one of you gets it wrong, the person who got it right <laughs> is the winner of the match. I like did Gucci's shirt get shorter as the I know. match. I know. Such a legend. Both Dan and Ben. You both reset. You both have one JTE rule. One JTE rule. What was Lars. the answer, by the way? Lars. 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 Oh. Huh. That's the worst feeling ever. Yeah. yeah. Champion, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Challenger, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. All right. Cam Shafty. Gucci is a sex symbol. Agreed. He's an icon. Question one. Angelina Jolie. Category? No, we don't. It's not in sudden death. You just get the question. Yep. And I don't like that at all. No. In which 2014 Disney film? Kung Fu Panda? No, I think it's Maleficent, if you like. What's the record for these? Nine? It's like uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know years as well as you do. I, yeah. I, I do years based on what was going on in my life. <laughs> yep. Maleficent. There we go. There you go. Uh, see? There you go. True. All right, gentlemen. Your next question. That's, I need context of the Who category. Card? Opposite Charlie Sheen in the 1990 comedy Men at Work. The tough part about here is I think I'm already I'm already rattled because looking back on it, I know that he was in movies with this guy, and I should have guessed that. Like that's the obvious guess, but I I, I kind of outsmarted this myself. guy. It's his brother. <laughs> Too. Yeah, I just didn't want to give it away for the chat. But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the they know. Charlie Sheen in the 1990 comedy Men at Work. Yeah, I, I kind of I thought too hard about it. I started to like kind of go in circles, and I was like, Men at Work, Three Men and a Baby, Tom Selleck, Steve Gutenberg. Oh, it must be Steve Gutenberg. That's like my thought process here, as opposed to it's not Emilio Estevez, because I would know. <laughs> and Dan Merle? Emilio Estevez. Hey! Uh, Damn. Doesn't so, still hurt. Oh God, so much. 
I hate it so much that that's like to play like I played in that match and lose it like that. It's just I should have just had should have had it. That was mine to win. Can I can I ask you a question, Ben? You don't have to answer if you don't want to. I just how old are you? Like what what year were you born? Thirty one. Thirty one. Okay, so I'm th- that surprises me that you didn't grow up with heavyweights because that's like a movie that I grew up with and we're about the same age. Uh, so like you said, like you're my boy blue. I w- I you literally used to say all the time, do it to it, Lars, because there's a scene in heavyweights where like he puts like an ice block on Ben Stiller's abs and hits it with a hammer. As yeah. like a an exercise or something, because Ben still is literally playing his dodgeball character again. Yeah. Um, gotcha. uh, so it's literally like the same thing. So I I was really I thought you were doing your Ben Bateman thing. I really thought you had it. Yeah. I mean, one thing I've said to a lot of people, and then this match just reminded me and taught me again is like, you know, I I watched most of those family movies that people talk about that this is in the same class of when I was a kid. Like I saw most of them. I saw. All the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. I saw Indian in the Cupboard, Matilda, Harriet the Spy, Surf Ninjas, Three Ninjas, Heavyweights. Like Surf much- Ninjas. Yes, Rob Schneider, baby. <laughs> like most of them I watched. The thing is, most of them I watched when I was like seven. So like, to, I don't you haven't remember. gone back and revisited them. You haven't like binged them. Don't no. binge. Don't watch Blank Check. You realize after you rewatch it that that kid <laughs> is the villain, and he's an ass. Can I say he's an actor? He's an actor. (laughs) Yeah, and so that's the truth. In the chat, and I've really made an effort now since this happened to do that top level studying I did with Tyler Perry on family films because I recognize there's actually not that many of them that are like in this wheelhouse. Yeah, there's like thirty or less that like really qualify as that late '80s into like 1996 range that fit exactly the age you're talking about, Goddard. Where the question writers, they all became like. The early 80s ones. I won't oh. lie. There's definitely some fried green tomatoes questions in there. Uh, there's there, Those will pop up. Um, God. Yeah, I went through movie. about where I was re-watching stuff. Captain Ron. Anytime there's a Captain oh, Ron question, on. that's my fault. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, because it's just stuff. It's stuff that like I watched when I was a kid and I was like, these are fantastic. Yeah, I think I think like when you talk about like generational, you know, I mentioned old school, different different part of the generation, right? Old school comes out when I'm 15, so I'm joking with my high school friends about old school all the time. So like that part, you know, like that's recent. Yeah, enough. the you're my of, boy blue. Yeah, I can well, see that. And it's a movie that's rewatchable to an adult because it's an R-rated comedy. I, so that that's yeah. just the truth, and that's why heavyweights to me is like I don't think it's I don't think it's unfair. I don't point the finger and say I got screwed out of the match. That's not how I feel. I just I go back and I look at it and I go, if I got one more point somewhere else in the match, I win. Um, I think that the balance of five point questions is important for the league going forward. I do think there's something to think about when it comes to, like I said, guessable versus not guessable. I think that's, that's probably the best and easiest thing to look at. If we ever wanted to try to get a little more balance is like, it's difficult if you, you know, even, even like Roka who, and we'll talk about this tomorrow on the show when he gets that great steal against Pollyama. Yeah, you know, it's a so great good. deal, but it's also like he's given some context clues, right? Like I think it's Southern. He's Stacy Howard at his way through it for sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and when it's like you have a limited amount of time and and you have fourteen options to pick one of, you still have a much higher percentage chance than just what's the name of a character that you don't know the name of, right? Yeah. Like that's not even like when when Bibiani loses that match when it's like what were what were John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale shopping for when they meet in the movie at Serendipity? It's like. He doesn't guess gloves, but how many things are you shopping for that you would be shopping for at the same time at that age that you'd be buying? Gloves is maybe one of the 50 things you'd guess, I guess, or the 80 things you might guess. Lars yeah. is one of like a million names. I, I mean, or if you There's want to more than fill it down to non-American, <laughs> like far away names, like Lars is just a name. There's no statistical probability to ever guess that unless you know it, which is like, I think those are inherently different things. So that's like, but but again, I've won matches on good luck. I've lost matches on bad luck. It just happens. Yeah, like uh, that, I do think that the proper uh, Nick and Nora question would have been like, what band are they trying to see that night? And that's like the proper Nick and Nora question because that's like, that's a tough pull. That's a tough pull. It's something that you have to watch the movie. You have to have seen the movie because like they, they're saying it throughout the- yeah. Off of a synopsis. Do you know what I mean? Like if yeah. it's something that that was one of the things that I think we always come back to when it comes to five pointer questions is 
can you know the answer to this question without having seen the movie? Because like, so in, unless it's yeah. an obscure actor, a very obscure actor or director, someone that hasn't done a lot of work or has a huge body of work, uh, it's either got to be that or it's got to be something that you had to have seen the movie in order to get. I think also like when you think about it, and this is the this is the thing I've, I've admitted this to people before. If the question was, well, actually, there's there's two steps to this. Number one, I regret not challenging the question, uh, not because I necessarily think I would have won, but because I didn't use my challenge in the match. And yeah. the question is in the category of Judd Apatow, and it's about a movie that he wrote and produced. But he is in the category of director on the slice on the slice wheel. Like you pick him as a director when you get the yeah. list of movies you can pick. He's in there as a director. So because of that, you study for the movies he's directed. So if I had challenged at the time, he didn't direct this movie. He is a director. I'm going to study the movies he's directed. This is a miscategorized question. Maybe I win it. Probably not, but it's possible. And I didn't have anything to lose at that point. So I should have challenged it. Um, yeah. And then the second piece is if I get asked in that moment, what's the name of Ben Stiller's character in Heavyweights? Much higher likelihood that I remember because I know the name Tony Perkis. But truthfully, I don't think I pull it there. I don't think I. I don't think I would have gotten there. That, that's, but that's, the, but that's the. But that's the. But that's exactly what I used to get notes about, and that is that you can't ask like the name of a like you can't ask the name of a character. Like that's what we used to not like like the way you just said it. What's the name of Ben Stiller's character? Totally different. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not. It's that's an easier guess because then you don't. It does half the work for you. Whereas if you can't remember who played that person, then you've got to do you figure figure out that person, and then you've got to like, eh, I'm not explaining it properly, but it's a much harder question the way it's worded than the way you just said it. And I don't. That's I my don't, point in the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. I don't know if you could have challenged that, Ben, because like when just this year, literally, like Coen Brothers are a category, and Drew and Drew got a, a what. Steven Spielberg movie did the Coen Brothers right. I know, but that's that that happened after. That's my point. Yeah. Had I done it, had I done it prior when there's no precedent set, then I think I have a better chance to win the challenge. But bottom line is, if if I ask you the same question, Goddard, you know, what is what is Stiller's character's name in Heavyweights? It's even easier than Lars, right? Because it's like you've seen that movie a lot, Tony Perkis. That's like just the character's name. Like you've seen the movie a lot. I, I think I yeah. Think and if I, I still think like that one, I'm just not familiar with the movie. That's just what it is. Like the the I think the good five pointer out of that would be like, what does Ben Stiller call his exercise program in heavyweights? And it's Percocis. And like that, that would be like a, a fun like five pointer. Yeah. Cause like if you know Tony Perkis, maybe you can pull that. Maybe you can like remember, like, we're gonna percocize you today or something like, like that. The bangerang question. Exactly. That's a five pointer to me. Yeah, I mean, I cool. know the answer because I know that. Oh, that was you, wasn't it, Ben? It's another one in the family films category that I lost on. So, uh, how did, oh, Ben, sorry. what was I your childhood? I love Hook. I've said this before. My brother gave me a VHS <laughs> copy of Hook when I was a kid. How do you forget Bangarang Rufio? I just forgot it. But I was, I was, that was also, I was a worse player back then. I think I've, I've grown a lot. I think I probably, I think maybe if I get that question today, I don't know, but. Anyway, enough on that. I don't need to discuss questions. I lost the match. Dan's the champ. <laughs> that's the uh, that's gonna pretty much wrap up our uh, our part one of this. It was this fun. Show. I've got a few chat was, here. Sorry. The chat was so good tonight too. Yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, uh, real quick before I, I read the streamlabs. Okay, so you're gonna laugh so hard at what F's in the chat mean, Jen. So oh for a Call of Duty game, there was like there's parts in a game where like you're basically just walking, but you're still playing, but it's not like an action th thing. So yeah, in you're Call just Duty, getting from point A to point B. Yeah. Like you're just moving through the game. Yeah. You're okay. at your friend's funeral and he's he's like dead, obviously, and he's in the coffin. And you walk up to the coffin, and if you're playing on keyboard, it says press F to pay respects. And so you literally have to <laughs> activate putting your hand on the coffin. And it was like the most ridiculous, non-necessary active thing in a game ever created. So it's perfect. That's pretty funny. <sighs> But I got Absolutely I got two streamlabs real quick and then we'll get out of here. Oh, Jesus. Uh Ferris Muthana, yes, Triple H did have an accent, but he was French Canadian. His name was Jean Paul Levac, and he was teammates with William Regal and Jen. Thank you for William, yeah, William Regal. And, oh yeah, and Jen, thank you big up That's for adorable. the the shock master LOL. That was You're amazing. welcome. I there. like to bring I like to bring some some wrestling into this. Yeah, I just buddy. love how the rest of the wrestlers just went silent. 
Like no one was saying anything when he <laughs> fell down. I was like, everybody but was that feeling was this not moment. how that was supposed to go. Uh, Zeke Gallo and Jerry Jedi here throwing in some cat emojis. Uh, we gave we gave Ferris the option. We're giving all of our generals in the action army call signs. So it's like call sign, call sign Viper, call sign whatever. And and Ferris's nickname is General Meowthana because somebody said meow at one point. I think it's funny. Um, so I told him we could he could be call sign Meowthana or he could be call sign Whiskers. And he, he hasn't he hasn't let us know which one he wants yet, but there's a lot of folks in here throwing in. Yeah, I like Whiskers. Oh, so I like funny. Whiskers a lot. And then last one, uh, Lucas J. Shashek. I would officially like to support the scarf. It was chilly and ATL yes. that weekend. Yes. Can't go running around with cold necks. <laughs> I love that. Salute to you, Commander Chief Shashek. Thank you so much for your support. Um, all right, guys. I think that's gonna wrap us up. We're gonna be back tomorrow night, same time, same place for the second half of the season. There's some other big, very memorable matches to talk about. Yeah, Jen, thanks for doing this. This was great. Um, so tune in, guys, tomorrow night. Be sure to hit that follow button. Um, it doesn't cost you anything. Follow along with what we're doing here on Twitch, trying to hit those uh, those affiliate hours. And uh, otherwise, sorry, I, I did miss one, Davlin. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Davlin again. Did Bateman and Jen hear about what prize was for this year until the pandemic came along that Christian talked about today on SCN? Love you, Evil Jessica for manager of Reform Team Action. Hashtag Sergeant Salute. <laughs> Uh, there was the, the 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 prize was never revealed, and I think it was based is based on resources that I think have have been moved around because of COVID now. So I'm not totally sure what it is. Yeah, uh, he said me he mentioned it that it might have been like a, a trip to Hawaii a or trip, something like yeah. that. Yeah, I think it was a trip is what it was originally. I don't know what it is now because, like you said, yeah. there's a lot of things up in the air. And let's face it, none of us are taking trips right now. Nope. So, uh, man. One of these days, I feel like we have to sit down and talk about all the different storylines that I pitched Christian that he was like, no, that's stupid. I pitched it <laughs> like I've pitched invasion angles. I pitched so much like old school wrestling stuff. But like, oh, maybe we should talk about that tomorrow yeah, with, our special, with our special guest if I can get him. I hope so. Jen, where can the folks find you if they want to follow along with what you're doing? At Jennifer Sturger on all the social media, guys. And if you want to do me a huge solid, you can go check out the videos that I've been doing for All Elite Wrestling on their YouTube channel. And, like, subscribe to that. Give me some thumbs up and um, whatever the opposite of an F in a chat is. <laughs> <laughs> and if you guys want to follow along with what I'm doing, check out YouTube.com slash Action Industries and YouTube.com slash Nerds and Suits. I've got interviews with Dan Merle about this match that we just watched on my channel. Now you can watch. Roka posted today. Um, and then Action Industries, we're doing the full Action Rewind series for our patrons. So go check it out. Otherwise, thank you all for watching on Twitch, and we will see you tomorrow night. Thanks, Goddard, for helping out.